Warning, the following podcast contains strong language, which some listeners may find offensive. If you do, up yours. That's only if you don't listen to the podcast. Otherwise, not up yours. Did you know the Untitled Wrestling Podcast is on all of the social media outlets? Give us a like, follow, share, subscribe, or even a review if you're feeling generous. Facebook and YouTube at Untitled Wrestling Podcast. Twitter, Twitch, and Discord at Untitled Rest Pod. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Untitled Wrestling Podcast. It is Tuesday. You know what that means. It is me, your boy, Big Tasty, joined once again this time by both Faye and Jay. Uh, Jay, we'll start with you. How's it going? You've been been away for a few weeks. Yes, um, I'm so tired. <laughs> you, you missed uh, <laughs> you missed all of our balanced CM Punk discussion last week. Oh so, no! What a so shame. Impartial. <laughs> did, so impartial. Did, did you did you quote my actual my actual impartial thing and said? Yeah, we did. Like... We, we, we actually <laughs> went through the, we went through. I dug through the Discord to find it and read it for you. That's how much you mean to me. Thanks, mate. That's the integrity. I, I was I was gonna say like one of us had to have a kind of impartial, unbalanced view. If and it ain't if coming it from been, me. If it had been a day later, I probably would have been more inclined to be like Foxy and Punk after the whole Regal thing uh, came out. Oh god, mm. yeah. I, I didn't know about that at the time, so let's let's leave it there. Uh, and the, and also Faye, how are you? Um, I am yeah. good. I'm getting over in um, Wrestle Rona, so you know. <laughs> Wrestle Rona, the, 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 the great. Of course, rest- at a Wrestle Island. The, like... the great Wrestle Island COVID yeah. outbreak of 2023. Yeah. The island flu. Wrestle flu is what I've been calling it. I, I, like like I, it COVID. I can confirm that both Samoa Joe and Zack Sabre Jr. are unaffected by the island flu. Oh, that's fine then. Uh, <laughs> the, island, the, island, the island boys made out okay. Um, but yeah, I've been I've been okay to be honest. I've just been I spent the entire of Saturday just watching like wrestling nice. and shitty TV. It was great. Obviously, one of the downsides to the, the, this Wrestle Island COVID outbreak was the postponement of Off the Page, um, yeah. which was a bit of a shame. I know like lots of people got the Rona and couldn't Nine come. People who were on that card, <laughs> Jesus, got COVID. It would have been like the um, it would have been like the SmackDown after everyone got stuck in Saudi Arabia for absolutely no reason. Or that time, or Matt Cardona's wedding. Oh, Mac, oh, oh, when Matt Cardona's wedding gave everyone the COVID. <laughs> and it, I, <laughs> I was I was gonna say that raw where like there was the Icelandic volcano that went off, so like all the flights got grounded. Yeah, or so as they literally had thirteen people on that entire show. Or as as Faye said, when uh, when Mac and his wedding ruined the TNT title. Don't worry yeah. about it. Uh, yeah, so. Uh, obviously, we look forward to the rescheduled date for off the page. The show was looking to be really good. We wanted, we really wanted to go not only to watch some really good wrestling, uh, including Kawhi Killers, but we also wanted to go to Cafe at the End of the Universe and have some nice burgers. Because let's face it, not, not an Oscar getting us warranted, is it? So it's it's a shame that um, that it got postponed. But I am happy because now I get to see it. You yeah, I'm, I mean? I'm also quite happy that it's a bit spread out because being like the week before I go to three wrestling shows in three days felt like, and the week after I went to Wrestle Island felt it felt a bit like sort of crammed in. I know, and I realised how spaced out like my next wrestling stuff is, and it's still it's made everything like so relaxed. Oh, nice! Like I have like two events to go to on October, and like that's it. But then you go into like actual Wrestle Kingdom, so you know. I mean, that's yeah, that's like. Yeah, yeah, I, I am, aren't I? But like, that's like, that's like, like not, that's like, that's like not that far away, you know. That's like quite close. It's a hundred and eight days um, <laughs> till I go to Japan. Nice. And I am. And that card's out. probably going to be getting shaped. But when's when's destruction? That's like next week, isn't it? Or this week? Is it? Will that will we start adding matches it's, for Wrestle Kingdom then? You usually, you usually get an idea of what's going to be happening. Um. Let's have a little nosy. I mean, you're gonna, you're gonna get to watch Gato put um, Sonata's title in the ground where it belongs. Fuck Gato. I just, <laughs> um, I just want Zach to have a good time. It's all I want. I, I, I mean, he, he's not gonna, he's not gonna be a wrestling for the IWGP Championship. Sadly. Sad times. Um, let's have a look. Destruction. Let's see what we got here. Um, 
I can't so, find the so, 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 this 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 oh. could be this could be the official start of our news segments, by the way. Um just for anyone okay. who's who's listening yeah. along. As J- this is Jerry, um, this is Jerry tries to tries to find New Japan cards. We've we've had this I've, segment I've before, it. and it's it's proved very popular when we we bumble I've through the website it. trying to find the cards. It, it oh, no, I've, I've got it. Go I got it already. Uh, so it's on the twenty fifth of September. Actually, we're on the road at the moment, which is like there's loads there's loads of just like random sort of kind of house shows with a lot of multi man matches. Uh, Callum Newman made his New Japan debut today. Yes, I saw that. Yeah, that Congratulations, was- Callum Newman. And. Because he's Will Ospreay's personal young lion, he had special United Empire young lion gear, which was fucking awesome. And he had to say from like, blacksmith as well, didn't he? Yeah, it was just essentially like the black um, trunks and like kick pads with like a green stripe down the side. It was really cool. Um, Big fun. So, yeah, the main event is Will Ospreay defending the IWGP US Championship against Yota Suji. Um, it's basically like a theme of LIJ versus United Empire throughout the card. Uh, Naito's defending his G1 briefcase against Jeff Cobb. We, we can hope for Faye's sake. Sonata did you say, versus Jeff sorry, Cobb did you say LIJ as well? Again, are you saying it's an LIJ? Yeah, are you saying that then Naito's going Don't to win at Wrestle Kingdom? Don't worry about it. Um, there's Shingo versus Great Khan and just, just a random match, which will I mean, be sure will be okay, very good. That'll, 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 yeah. that'll be good. Um. The Mighty Don't Kneel, Shane Haste and Mikey Nichols against Bishamon for the tag titles. Uh, Taichi versus Sho for the King of Pro Wrestling Championship in a match nobody asked for. Um, and uh, Bullet Club, Finley, Gado, Chase Owens, Alex Coughlin and Gabe Kidd versus G.O.D., um, which is Tamatonga, Tangaloa, Jado, Hikaleu and an ELP. Uh, Chaos, Akada and Ishii versus Zack Sabre Jr., Bad Dude Tito. Takahashi and Bushi versus Leo Rush and Yo. Uh, just five guys is Sanada, Doki, and Kanemaru versus House of Torture again. Another match nobody asked for. Yeah. And uh, Bullet Club War Dogs, Clark Connors and Driller versus Tiger Mask and Kevin Knight. Yes. So that's Anything fun, isn't it? Like, Kevin Knight and Driller like, need to have a singles match, to be honest. I think that'd be good. Yeah, um, they did. I think they did have one in the best of Super Juniors. Juniors. Um, the, there is also so that that's one of the cards. The other one was yesterday, but I haven't seen any of the results for it. Um, mm-hmm. I say I say it was yesterday. No, I'm lying. Ninth of October. The other one is. Um, I just got my dates mixed up. Which is they did have one so, yesterday though. You are right. Oh, that was just a tall one. Um, so yeah, um, th- this this card sounds fucking insane. To be fair. Uh, Sonada versus Evil for the IWGP World Heavyweight Championship. Uh, Finley versus Tamatonga for the Never Openweight Championship. Uh, New Japan Strong Openweight Tag Titles, the Bullet, Do- Bullet Club War Dogs defending against uh, Hikaleu and ELP. Oh, um, okay, that'll be good. A triple threat for the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship, which has Match of the Year written all over it. Takahashi versus Speedball versus Leo Rush. <laughs> um then we've got Bullet Club War Dogs' Clark Connors and Driller defending the belts against Kushida and Kevin Knight. Uh, the two Tangle matches Lopez in one card. And, well, uh, the other ones, um, Coughlin and Gabe Kidd. Um, Tangalo versus Chase Owens. And finally, in a best of seven series, match seven, Suzuki, Desperado, and Ren Narita versus Shuta Umino, Yuji Nagata, and Master Wato. So two... Hi. Two pay-per-views stretched across two weeks. Should be fun. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. And that, I'm that's kind of like... Them, aren't I? Yeah, that's kind of like the... Going to be what shapes the Wrestle Kingdom main event. Also, usually if there's like a big name talent that's like like a, like a Kenny in last year and Jericho in recent years, they usually announce either on this show or the finals of World Tag League in December. So that's when you want to be keeping an eye on stuff. Like. It was October last time, wasn't it? Because um, they, announced, uh, they announced Kenny's thing, like in the middle of the Best of Seven series, didn't he? It wasn't in the World Tag, World Tag League. I thought it was when he like came back. Like they announced that he was also doing thingy, but I don't know. 
He just I, had I that know. very obvious gap, didn't he? When it when he had the best of seven, like that, like they weren't there for Wrestle Kingdom. Oh, sorry, got yeah, I'm I'm on to it now. I thought you, I thought you, yeah, you mean the AW one, don't you? The Death Triangle. Yeah, yeah. yeah I got yeah. really confused there for a second. Sorry, um, <laughs> it's all right. Uh, yeah, I so they I, that would have been December. Then they announced that because it was after Full Gear. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it was. And usually, I'm pretty sure Jericho, when he got announced against Tanahashi and against uh, Kenny, it was again the sort of like World Tag League or like December, first week of December sort of time. It's like a month out from Wrestle Kingdom. So you'll probably see a few bits getting announced at that and then more around the World Tag League. Just watch me slowly lose my sanity in real time on the podcast as the months go on. <laughs> I mean, the, the last podcast you record before... Wrestle Kingdom is when we're probably going to do the Wrestle Kingdom preview because we usually take a break for Christmas. So that's going to be an Faye having an absolutely normal one. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> I go away on the 28th of December. Um, we and usually then... do like, I'll, we usually have a break over Christmas. So it'll be like, mm-hmm. we'll do like the, the Monday before Christmas and then probably won't do anything until like New Year. So I mean, you're gonna have to work out the time. The last, well, the last where, episode like, before Christmas, you'll get to, you'll get to just well, like, like go wild about. Can, though, I'll um, I'll try and jump on one while I'm in Japan, but it's just That'd working out the time zones. Like that, seven, that seven in the morning, just like yeah. <laughs> also, yeah, when when we're likely to record at the same time. It'll either be the middle of the night for you or the mid, like middle of the night for us. I'll just go. I'll just go and sit in a Seven Eleven somewhere. It'll be fine. Go to one of those internet cafes. I hear they've got them all over the place in Japan. Go, go to Bad Luck Farley's bar and see if. Uh, see I'll if do that. Yeah. It's just like sat in the corner, like slugging whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just go sit on the floor in the Suzuki shop. It's fine. Oh, if, you get mur- try and murder me. If, if you get murder granddad on this podcast, I mean, no one on this podcast has ever got us to talk to a Japanese wrestler before. No I mean, one. No I mean, one. I mean, no, no one. one on, no, nobody on this podcast has, no. No, no, <laughs> no one bumped into Kota the Bushi outside the collective and forgot to fucking, like, take a picture <laughs> or video with all right on his phone. Uh... <laughs> uh, right, so we move on. Do you want some breaking news that has literally just dropped? Yeah. No. Um, so apparently, LA Knight is. No, he's not close yeah. to. He's not. No, no, not not yet. Um, apparently, he's not close to um agreeing a new contract with WWE. Apparently, um, they're currently negotiating a long term deal, believed to be five years. This is all from uh, Feifel, uh, Shoma Sapper Feifel, obviously the daddy. Um, and apparently they are, according to um Shoma Sap, they are far apart on money. Uh, no, no deal has been agreed, but and doesn't appear imminent. But they're going to keep negotiating. Um, I mean. The amount of money that LA Knight's probably made in merch in the last three months would warrant a big fucking monster deal. Yeah, but you know, you'd think it's not like they're about to like literally close a mega deal and become one of the biggest companies of all time. You know, they haven't got that much money. This the end ever. No. Um... Well, we're talking about see, well, Faye's Faye just ruining the illusion that she's been there all along by proving she's been away from the computer. <laughs> um, no, this is LA Knight and WWE apparently far apart on money for his new deal. However, it's been stated that there is um, no truth to the fact that his push is being tied to a new deal. And even though he's only got a year and a half left, they're still obviously quite high on him and want to push him quite quite heavily. So that's insane I... if they don't re-sign him. That's, that's well, they, 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 they want to resign him. They just don't want to pay him an awful lot of money. <laughs> it's, it's the thing. He deserves the money though, because he's so over. Like, yeah, but, like but, if, but, if they, but if they don't give him that money, then Vince can have that money. That's Vince true. doesn't deserve anything. And then think how much more goosing he can do <laughs> with, with that money. Think how much you know. Then get some mutant time there. I really um, don't want to think about that ever. I mean, to be fair, in in our time, in less than twelve hours. Vince is no longer going to be the head stakeholder of that company. It will be by the time it will have happened. By the, by the time, time this is released, it will have happened. Yeah, huh? right. Yeah, this moment right now, we're just to destroy the illusion. We're we're, we're in a unique situation, so we we are in the Vince era. But you, dear listener, listening to this podcast, you are not. Like, think about that. Yes. We're, we're coming to you from uh, a, a different time, a different like. Universe. I hope everything's okay. Yeah. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, I, I hope Vince didn't like grab the new the new CEO and try and like kill him with a broken bottle or something. I mean, I'm not or saying this. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying the website I, I sort of aggregate my wrestling news from is is particularly bad. But there is one of the headline stories is that we shouldn't expect to see Jay Car go back in AW anytime soon. Who said that? <laughs> Uh, Daddy Dave, apparently. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah, I mean, as, as Daddy Dave would say. So, in the latest edition of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, Dave Meltzer reported there has been no talk of late regarding if or when Cargill will return to wrestling. I mean, mm. Jade Cargill was doing the Lord's work and, like, working the shit out of all the dare cheats. <laughs> it's like, um, you know, in basketball, I... when when they do the um, when they do like the missing persons thing for um, Cooper. Yeah, and it's uh, and like at the end when he's like just won the title, the guy's like, "We still have no fucking idea where this guy is." <laughs> yeah, I, I mean to uh, to be fair to Daddy Dave, he usually writes the observing newsletter like four or five days before he actually releases it. Yeah. Oh. So a lot of his news by the time he puts it out is out of date anyway. And it's it's not like Dave Meltzer to get worked by AEW, is it? No, it's never happened. And, no, never. Yeah, and, and he he usually just like bumbles through his hands, go, well, you know, uh, remember, but plans plans can change. I mean, they might not change, but the, I'm sure they might change. You just don't know. They sometimes they do, sometimes they don't, but they might change. Talks and, like a uh, sphinx. He, he talks like he's got a fucking severe head injury. Um, <laughs> riddle. But yeah. Um, Jade Cargill, to be fair to her, was, as I say, doing the Lord's way. Yeah. And like saying, I've got no interest in going back. I, I don't think I will. And then go, but a Tony Khan's got me on speed dial and he replies to me every time I text him. And it's like, yeah. Jade yeah. when Jade comes when Jade comes back, it's gonna be great. Um I I know because I was watching Collision and so you tasty, I assume we both like jumped out of our seat when it happened. I shat myself i was like oh I, my god what the I fuck i accidentally up. spoiled it for nat like oh i was like i know because to be you fair like i thought monster. i didn't mean to i'm already I like was, guilty enough i was over this. i was deliberately not naming jade so it didn't get spoiled no this was today i spoiled it for nat like this morning no, so like i like, it's past the 48 hour threshold that's no problem <laughs> so I was like, I was like, Kevin Kelly forgot Jade Cargill's like, like um finishing finisher name, and she was like Jade's back, and I was like, oh no. <laughs> I I do like that Jade has incorporated the choke slam into her arsenal as well. Yeah, I mean because that's neat, isn't it? Did you see some fan was like, oh my god, I can't believe you. this is great. I wanted to see a woman do a choke slam for so long, and Nyla was like, I'm right here. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say Nyla does chokeslam <laughs> and she does like that uh, Uranagi like Samoa Joe does as well yeah um, right, any other news I, so I'm not going to name this this news article because it was fucking um, awful but I did see an article on um, on the, on Twitter that I got, got sort of dragged across me and it was like it was like some sort of insane CM Punk pro hit piece on AW saying that the AW are in crisis and, um, I saw that. And it said one of the things they need to do to save the company is to, quote, release Action Bronson because he hasn't appeared for the company in months. What? <laughs> <laughs> Didn't they also, they were also like, they need to hire a booking team. And I I, yeah. I was like, did, oh my God. Did they like capture that fucking worm off that woman's brain? <laughs> they, wow. like, they, they, need to re- they need to bring Eric Bischoff and Jim Cornette in to run the, the creative team. They need to uh, fire the elite. I, because I did. I did like um the fact that you see um someone said something about the like creative team, and we're like, oh, I mean, look at look at this, a load of a load of nobodies on this creative team, and Sean Ross Sapp was like, are you just going to ignore like the fact they've got a WrestleMania main eventer as one of the creative? <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, just, he just left Danielson out of the list. We're just in like, the best era, aren't we? Like like at the minute with him I mean, like on at the not, helm. Not so much with the. Uh, Social media, but certainly with 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 him doing creative. I I was gonna say certainly with the fact that now Punk's gone, Brian Danielson's like gradually turning Collision into Lucha Underground slowly but surely. (laughs) I I personally can't wait for John TV to cut off Luchasaurus's head with a sword. (laughs) I'd be so happy with that. Um, that I've got two little bits of little tidbits of news. Um. 
One, again, sort of long overdue, New Japan have announced um, that New Japan World is finally getting its own app on iOS, Android, and Roku. What? Um, I mean, I would have to watch it through the web browser on my Xbox on the TV like like a peasant. That is correct. <laughs> uh, I, it, uh, well, to be fair, there's nothing about a TV app yet. Yeah, but I can, I can probably cash it on my phone like through Xbox. There's a Fire Stick app if you have that, one of those. Oh, the Fire Stick app? It doesn't stick work. App is fucking broken. This is a brand new app they're making um, to rectify that, apparently. Will, will Gator um, come around to my house and show me how to use it? No. I don't know. Get, I mean, he wouldn't do it for me. He fucking hates me after he does, that. He does hate show. you after Repro. Um... <laughs> I'm going to not uh, mention you at all, Jay, when I'm in Japan. And I, I should be I like, fine. I like the fact that on that uh, on that show, if you watch it back, you can see a bit where Gato just loses his rag with me and turns around and goes, Fuck you, asshole! <laughs> I'd, I'd, I'd love it if, like, fair, you sit down at Wrestle Kingdom and then all of a sudden Gator comes up with some security guards and a picture of Jay points at Jay, points at you, and then you removed from the building. <laughs> I, no, I'll send them. Gets me kicked I'll, out of Japan. I'll, I'll send Gator a tweet saying, Look out for this woman. <laughs> oh, no. Faye, Faye she shares stopped. my feeling. She Faye shares get, my feelings on you. Faye getting stopped at immigration and just sent home. <laughs> um, yeah, that, that was the first bit of news anyway. Second bit of news, which is a lot more exciting than that. Is uh, at GCW's uh, show at Corrick and Hall, Joey Janela's challenged Jun Kasai to a death match. That'll be sensible. Oh, yes. yes, please. Um, and not an else been announced for that. It's only in a, it's only a couple of weeks away as well. But uh, yeah. is Akira so, doing that? Because he's not doing tournament to death anymore. Um, he, he's going over to Japan. So I'm wondering, is it I, if it's for that? I believe they've only announced. So far, they've only announced um, that Vikingo's coming to that show and Janela vs. Kasai. Not to. Uh, okay. They might have he a can't even. He can't even come over to Liverpool because he's in Japan. Damn. Um, do, do, we, do we want to talk about Matt Riddle having a. No. Nope. I mean, do, do, or... do, we, do we want to touch the Riddle stuff? Um, I mean, because allegedly someone touched him. Ew, so. that sounds cursed. Do we want to well, touch the riddle stuff? No. I mean, if it's good for the goose, it's good for the gander, allegedly. Um, Christ. <laughs> that might have to get out of the doubt, Tasty. <laughs> I, I, I don't have a shit, Mitch, so I, I, I ain't got that's, time for that. That's true. That's true. Um, yeah, so apparently Riddle like posted something on Twitter and deleted it quite quickly, saying that a uh, police officer at the airport sexually assaulted him. Um, then... It came out that Riddle was massively inebriated on his flight and causing problems, and that's why they tried to like do a search on him. Didn't end up that way, but now they are doing an internal investigation on it, uh, and he's been kind of sheepish and quiet since. So, mm-hmm. obviously, if it did happen, I feel somewhat bad for him. Um, I mean, I don't want to. I don't want to like wish Riddle. Ill. I, I, I don't want to like. Jinx, yeah, but it's not really the type of thing you want to happen right before your company gets bored and like a massive takeover deal. No, Especially no, no. when he's already got previously like bad relations with one of the board members. Oh yeah, it's UFC, isn't it? Oops. Um... Yeah. Um, it's not like he's been very vocal about about that, but yeah, um, it's a weird one. As I say, um, who knows? Who knows? Remember Riddle was like the fucking drug shaman for MSK? Yeah. Wild times. What what, what a journey those three guys have been on over the last sort of two years. Wow. wow. It's Tad Wesley noises. Um, yeah, anyway, uh, slightly slightly more positive thing as well that I, I feel like we should actually put some light on. Um, Mike Rotunda, the father of the late Bray Wyatt, actually... Uh, he put a really nice tweet out, I think it was yesterday, just thanking The Rock, who's apparently he's been like sending like groceries to the house and stuff like that. Just to, generally to multiple houses, apparently. To multiple houses, just generally being very supportive of them, which is nice. Yeah. Good lad, Dwayne. Top guy, Dwayne. Spending more than seven bucks on, uh, on all those groceries. That's, I see what you did there. <laughs> I see what you did there. Uh, a uh, bit more news. Uh, Hacksaw Jim Duggan's been in hospital. Yes, yeah. he has. 
he had, apparently had a he had emergency surgery, but he's apparently on the mend and recovering. So we wish him all the best. He's been yeah, a lot, hasn't he? Like, cause he, yeah, um, he had that recently, didn't he? As well, he's had multiple things like over yeah. the years. He's beat cancer twice. He's he's been yeah. a been through the ringer, so to speak. Um, yeah, thought so with him and. Uh, should, should we should we talk last little bit of news about the uh, the Impact Wrestling Hall of Fame? Yeah, I think we should because I'll spin into the next. One I'm going to talk about so that'll be a nice way to sort of branch it, branch it all together. Well, yeah, so. um, two names, well, three actually have been announced for the Impact Wrestling Hall of Fame. First one is um, excuse me, uh, former Knockouts um, champion Tracy Brooks. Oh, nice! One of the one of the OGs of Impact, yeah, uh, wife of Frankie Kazarian as well. Yeah, she's uh, great. Apparently, he surprised her with the announcement. Oh, that's sweet. Um, oh, like that. that's adorable. Yeah, um, it's, it's really nice because she feels like one of the one of the sort of the golden era knockouts that always gets sort of overlooked and forgotten, and sort of she never really got her flowers. Which, so it's nice for her to, uh, you know, to get to get hers and get in the get in the hall, which is great. Absolutely, and the other one. Um, very awesome to hear this one. Uh, Mike Tanay and the late great Don West getting inducted together. Yeah, arguably uh, the greatest comedy team in TNA history. Yeah, I'd say so. Um, definitely in recent times. Uh, you look sorry, definitely looking at recent times. You look back at those two, and they were just they just had like some awesome chemistry together, didn't they? You might remember them from that really cool gif where they do a high five. Yes. <laughs> Also healed Don Callis, eh, Don Callis, healed Don West for a little while, which was awesome. Yeah. Um, so, so speaking of which, um, another bit of TNA history news. Speaking of matches that they called um, recently, was it this week the two thousand and five Unforgiven match turned eighteen? Today. Is it actually um, today as we record? As we record right now, September the eleventh, two thousand and five. TNA, Impact Wrestling, whatever you want to call it, had their only ever Dave Meltzer five-star rated match, the main event of Unbreakable, a triple threat between AJ Styles, Samoa Joe, and Christopher Daniels, the X Division Championship, and oh boy, was it a match. So just to put things yeah, in perspective, was. this was around this time, like the X Division Championship was yeah. effectively the main belt in TNA, like in the main in the main event, like for the world title. It was like, was it still the NWA Championship at this point? They were they were it was the NWA Championship. It would have been, um, Jarrett, Sting, Christian, Rhino, Raven. maybe Jeff Hardy, Raven. That that was like the main event picture for the NWA title. It was it felt more like a legends belt, didn't it, at that point? And whereas the, the X Division title was like these new up and comers. You had Samoa Joe who was undefeated at the time. Um yeah. I mean we, this match is we, we will watch this. Well, I I didn't quite a time, but you guys watch this today. Um it's on TNA's or it's on Impact's official YouTube channel in its entirety. It's like half an hour long. Seeing like a, a fifteen years an eighteen years younger Samoa Joe is wild. I mean Yeah, Samoa smooth, Joe looks like a completely wild. different person. Smooth, smooth AJ Styles looks like the most 2002 person who ever existed. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so Chris, and Chris this, Daniels he, looks very much the same as he does now. Yeah, he just had a soul yeah. patch. Um, yeah. This was your first time ever seeing this match. Do you want to uh, get us started on it? It was my first time seeing a TNA match ever. 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 Wow. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. I, th- I, I don't know how to process that information. I, I don't. <laughs> um. This felt like, for me, this felt like one of those matches where you felt like every time you blinked, you missed something because it did not let up, like, from the bell at all. It was, like, insane. Yeah, um, it, goes, it goes a shade over 27 minutes and you wouldn't know, like, how quick everything goes. No. Yeah. Um. I mean, AJ Styles in this Some time was. Spots were a, insane. A, AJ like, Styles in this in this area just hits different. He is he is. I think at this point he's legitimately. All of them. Yeah, I think at this point AJ is legitimately one of the best wrestlers in the world. I think he he made that case. Yeah, I think at this point in time AJ Styles was kind of like, I'm trying to think who who's to compare him to. I'd say Orange Cassidy, as in he's like an underrated talent who is probably in the argument for best in the world. 
he's like 2005's version of him um like the the thing as well um with with this match is impact obviously filmed at universal studios at the time uh, a lot of the tickets were just free tickets for tourists yeah so, really yeah yeah like li- literally they, they didn't charge people it was like a studio recording so, so uh, just... say, have you been to universal studios in america yeah. So yeah, it's like it's like it's like two theme parks. So there's like Universal Studios and there's Islands of Adventure, and they're like connected by like a little walkway, like a little boulevard with like some restaurants and stuff on. And there, there's just like a load of like sound stages where they do like little extra recording bits. Really too dark, wasn't it? Yeah, they yeah they did dark and Ring of Honor tapings. They still do them every now and again, there, don't they? I think so. Yeah, in, in the uh, in the Elite Zone, so they, they, yeah. used, they used to have the Impact Zone, which is I think it's the same sound stage they use for. It is yeah, yeah. Um, the book said this, didn't he, when they were on Dar? Yeah, the last, well, yeah that's the last time they were there was when they were Generation Me, which is yeah. where Matt, which is where Matt Jackson's going to end up based on this BTA when he regresses back to his TNA form. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, and so yeah, they used to just wander around. They'd have like reps wandering around, just giving like families and tourists free tickets to fill the the, the venue, yeah. basically. So you could just that's go nice. with the kids, like go on the fucking Jaws ride in like the after in the morning, and then as you're walking between. Like the parks, they'd be like, Do you want to watch some free wrestling? And then you just turn up, and there's like a five star TNA match with AJ Styles, Chris oh Fidel, and Joe. And you're there, and, and your kids, your kids just want to go on fucking Toy Story, and you're there watching this match. And a lot of time as well, like the crowd, you could tell it was like a crowd of like tourists who were just like, Yeah, I'm just here to see the free wrestling. Well, I'm, no, I'm it, it, it was really interesting. So you, you had like about 50, 60 people who went into every show. And they were like live locally, yeah. and they were and there. Now the crowd for NXT in this school. Yeah, uh, they they were there at the front row, like chanting for everything. And then like literally yeah. everybody else just didn't give a fuck. They were just they were just there either to get out the heat because it was probably air conditioned in the building, or they were there because it was free or whatever. And like they were just like stuck in the background. And at this point, like TNA are putting on like literally excellent matches. It's before Hogan ruined everything. Uh, and yeah, people just don't give oh, a yeah. fuck about it, which is really weird. But it, it's telling how good this match is when the crowd were like on their feet. Like after about five minutes, like there's that spot where Christopher Daniels does the monkey flip into AJ and AJ like hits into Joe and turns it into a Hurricane Rana. Yeah. In like one forward motion. And as soon as they do that, everyone's like, oh my God, this is amazing. I mean, yeah. Joe, Joe, Joe does a twisting dive over the top rope. It and, was and- absolutely graceful like and that is never a word that i thought that i would ever describe the moa joe as but like i was oh. watching that and i was like oh my god that is gorgeous hey you need to you need to get on somewhere 2005 to 2017 and then oh watch god. Moa Joe doing the is, Lord's is this what i'm gonna have to do now is this my homework just yeah. aaron's doing it um, in Courtney. Just, just just roll into that and, and, and sort of tag along aaron <laughs> aaron's a, said said he's about a month away from this match where they're up to at the moment yeah um which is mental. Uh, but yeah, um, there was that, that spot you mentioned with the twist and dive. The way that shot is fantastic because Daniels goes for a dive on AJ. AJ moves out the way, goes for a moonsault on Daniels. Daniels moves out the way. Yeah, it's a big counter, countering <clears throat> thing, isn't it? Like, yeah. Where they counter then, each other's like flips. Yeah, and then they just end up brawling and Joe just like appears from nowhere and just like flattens a lot of them. Um, so good. And the the finish is like because there's so many false finishes as well where like people are throwing the others out the ring and it's like all right well this is going to be a it. Like, where is this where, where AJ gets thrown out the ring and it's like he disappears out of all existence. Oh, and Daniels he... like throws him out the, over the top. Yeah, and he, and like he just like pancakes. he misses the ring apron entirely and like just it's like he just drops and you just don't see him. AJ Styles used to take some of the fucking maddest bumps in TNA. Like, there's Tasty, you'll you'll know this one. The one in the cage match with Abyss where he gets the door flung at him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just like, and the Ultimate X one where he does like the backflip to like face plant. Yeah. Um, if, if you ever watch like, WWE this like this day and age and you think wow AJ Styles wrestles really safe nowadays go back and watch this this era of TNA and you'll understand why it's like yeah he's he's filled his bump card like early on like you know yeah I forgot how stiff like this match was as well though like Mm -hmm. there was some kicks Joe was doing to Daniels and I was like fucking hell it's like he owes him money yeah 
this Ju- AJ like is like completely different to like WWE AJ. And I've seen like I've seen AJ in New Japan. I've watched I've watched some matches. Oh no. And like you, you ain't you ain't seen AJ. Like this but is, I haven't this, seen like this this is AJ. This the only is time AJ I've seen like TNA is when it was on like the telly and it was just wrestling, so I watched it. You know what I mean? But I didn't mm. pay attention really because I didn't know anyone. Yeah. Um I definitely say it's worthwhile revisiting TNA. They've got like <laughs> Just just, on, in case anyone, just in case anyone is thinking about going back and watching some old TNA, I've, I've composed a handy guide for, like, do I want to watch the Secret <laughs> Styles match? So if Ric Flair's out there, no, you don't want it. Turn it off. <laughs> absolutely if, not. If Mortimer Plumtree's oh, out, if, 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 if Mortimer Plumtree's out there, you want it. That's the good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and if uh, and if he's by himself, he's probably all right. It's probably good to go. Mortimer Plumtree, fucking hell, tasty. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, um, I will say there's, there's one Flair match, which is that... Um, that lethal lockdown. Is that where, where he like, dives like through the cage? Yeah, and like no one catches him. Yeah, he just lands, he just eats shit, and it's like, oh, all right, okay. Doesn't he? Doesn't he? Is there's one as well where he jumps off a ladder on top of the cage, yeah, through a table onto somebody on top, and of then the, the ladder and gate, the ladder and table are on top of the cage, and he jumps off the ladder it, through the table. It's James Storm, isn't it? Quite possibly. Uh, and there's also, there's also, another one where Perk Angle throws him off the cage and he just misses everybody. Yeah, yeah. Uh, also, both of the King, or especially the one King of the Mountain match, is really good. The one with Mick Foley and where he jumps off, where AJ jumps off the penalty box onto everyone. Yeah. Um, do you want to explain King of the Mountain to Faye? Because she probably doesn't have a fucking clue what you're talking about. I don't. So King of the Mountain is what they let Jeff Jarrett do so they could sideline him. Um, So it's a reverse ladder match. So I'll try and explain this as succinctly as possible, but it takes some doing. So I think there's six competitors. Usually five or six, yeah. Yeah. And so first of all, it's just a a regular multi-man match. And initially you have to pin or submit somebody. When you do that, you become eligible. Okay. So when you score a pinfall, you have to do it once. You, and you're eligible for the rest of the match. You get like the, the announcer will announce such and such. AJ Styles is now eligible, and whoever you pin or submit has to go into a penalty box for two minutes, so they can't do any for two minutes. Once you are eligible, you then can ask the referee for the world title, and he will give it to you. You then have to climb up a ladder, and instead of getting a belt down, you have to hang a belt up. Because a lot of what TNA did right during this time was, what does conventional wrestling do? We'll do it the other way around, and it'll be good. Didn't they ne- do the reverse rumble? Uh, yeah, and it never was. Like that's the key. It was never. There's a reason why everything's done a certain way because that's the way it works. There's a reason you why did you the take reverse the, rumble, the reverse rumble, reverse royal cage match. Um, uh, they also did. had they also had the steel asylum, but we don't talk about that. It's too upsetting. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Um, they, they did that um that cage match as well where you had to handcuff everyone to the yeah. to the cage and then the two left had the match while everyone else was handcuffed to the cage. <laughs> uh, yeah, T- TNA was like sounds lawless. Oh, it's, it's fucking awesome! I love I love old school TNA. I I I've been saying to Aaron for ages about doing like a retro TNA podcast. I know you'd be up for that, tasty. Oh yeah. I, there's, I, there's only, like, there's only like one guy on YouTube who does TNA stuff, and he's really good. But there's only one of them. Yeah, I, I know Aaron wants to do a we watch, so you don't have to TNA show with you at some point. Is it is it Victory Road? I don't know. He said to, uh, you, you have to talk to Aaron about it when he comes. What up. was the one that was really bad? It was it was Vic, do, it was do the one with the Dixieland match. Oh, oh, the one with um, Jenna Mareska versus Sharmel. No, thank you. Um, Literally the I, worst wrestling match of all time. I watched that that and Victory Road Eleven. I watched with Dan Evans in his house. <laughs> I was I was both times legitimately angry at Dan for like dragging me over to his house to watch these shows. <laughs> Amazing. The only saving grace was that we ordered pizza. Yeah, not fair. I mean, otherwise I would have been essential. fucking. Otherwise, I would have been so angry at Dan. I might not. I might not have spoken to him again. <laughs> wow. Uh, but yeah, so, so to, to circle it all back, yes, uh, Unbreakable 2005 triple threat match, the only ever yeah. TNA match awarded five stars by Dave Meltzer. We've all watched it. It's 18 years old as we record today. Go and watch it on YouTube. It's really, really good. It's timeless. Yeah. Um, I, I feel like we'd be we'd be remiss without like kind of mentioning the impact it's had on today's kind of wrestling. Like, pun intended. Um, 
it without this match, I think a lot of wrestlers that you see in the likes of AEW and WWE mm-hmm. probably wouldn't be around or certainly wouldn't be as big as they are. Well, like, that, that, that whole AEW style where it's just like smooth, frenetic movements, like which you see so yeah. many times, like that that was born out of matches like this. Yeah. And obviously it goes without saying, like AJ Styles and Samoa Joe became massive stars off this. Christopher Daniels was kind of like a little bit older than them, wasn't he? he was sort of like in his it's, like it's, it's mad how Daniels was like considered a bit too old, like to to make it like eighteen years ago, and yeah, here he still is. Well, you you, I, I, you say a bit too old to make. It. He's like what thirty four in this match. He was old for the yeah, exhibition, wasn't he? That was like he was old. For, he he was old to be in a match where it was two guys who were kind of up and comers proving themselves, and then there's him who's like kind of the veteran because he'd been around for like at that point seven years he's like yeah, a veteran's then veteran isn't he yeah oh. but I, I mean you've just got to look at when like the books and Ethan Page and a couple of other guys from AW talk about TNA with such fondness and the people in Impact Wrestling as well who were there because it's Impact Wrestling I mean mm-hmm. um, Act 2 they got a impact type, uh, impact tag team title match against Subculture they the did. other week, and they were tweeting about going to, like one of the first house shows they went to was a TNA house show, which is cool as fuck. Mm. Um, but yeah, it, it's it's cool to see this match because obviously now it's looking back on it, it's not aged a day, and you can see like how it's influenced so many people. Yeah. Uh, right. Before we move on, talk about some AEW. I've just got one last bit of breaking news going back to something we talked about earlier. So, yeah. um, PW Insider have confirmed that Matt Riddle is not at tonight's raw taping. That's. And also, he is no longer expected to be on this weekend's live events in Idaho, Washington, which he had been confirmed to be booked on. Mm. So there you go. Take take that what you will. Um, right. Should we talk about some AEW? Yeah. 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 Uh, should we start I'm with... disappointed that your breaking news was not LA Knight that signed the contract. I mean, the name of the contract does say wrestling, but it says all of the wrestling. No. Um... <laughs> Don't say calm. Right. So let's talk some Dynamite. Because we all like Dynamite, right? Yeah. Yeah. It was a good episode, Dynamite. It was. It was. Um, I'm trying to think back to uh, like Wednesday. Seems like a million years ago now. <laughs> like. Well, oh, Moxie versus Day off. Moxie, Moxie versus Day off. Well, they start. Yeah, so this is what started about with Orange Cassidy coming out and doing his um, getting his flowers, which was really nice. Oh, this was sad. Um, speaking of which, as well, um, before we move on, I know we were kind of because Meltzer's star ratings come out, and we were kind of disappointed in Meltzer for not giving Orange and Mox five stars. Yeah, um, ridiculous. Your man Brian Zane did the right thing and did give it five stars. The real, the real people's, the real daddy of pro wrestling, the real people's the, the champion, real people's daddy. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Um, oh. So yeah, Orange came out and he did a really cool promo. Um, and he said he's going to be here every week, even though he's not got a championship. And then, as he's like about to leave, Mox's music comes on just for the fucking lols. Oh, and he stops. Yeah, and just he looks. There. And Mox is like going, "Come on, get in the ring." <laughs> it's like blowing him kisses oh, and no. stuff and it's just like stop I really am solidifying my opinion that I think Orange Cassidy might be rest of the year you know yeah oh it's no doubt for me yeah. I'm ready I, I'm ready. I, I talked myself into it earlier this year then I talked myself out of it and now I'm talking myself back into it yeah I think the, there's a there's two or three people who might edge him on it but let's see what like the last three months of the year holds for them. Yeah, I, I think there's, there's, I think there's certainly a, a small like selection of wrestlers that it could that could do something in the next three months <laughs> to really put themselves over the top. Um, yeah, but yeah, it's yeah. Then yeah, we had um, Moxie versus Al Fox, and so this it almost feels like this is like Al Fox. This first screwing up your travel for London, you now have to get battered by John Moxley. Yeah, this yeah. is your punishment. <laughs> and then he's gonna get crying by Nick Wayne at some point as well. Yeah. yeah, oh yeah, they, they did that, didn't they? Well, there was more of that later in, in the um, in the AW Pantheon. But this is a fun match. Um, Moxie just did horrible things to him. Uh, Fox was a little bit flighty here and there. It got out the way, but then yeah, um, 
Moxie murdered him, basically. Yeah, whenever anyone kind of jumps around against Moxie, it like, just seems to anger him. Yeah, it's, it's like, you know, when a fly is buzzing around, you eventually get it and you kill yeah. it. And it's like, you know. That's it, yeah. It's like he's King Kong and the person jumping around him is the planes. And yeah. he's just getting more and more angry, trying to fucking swap him out the sky and then choke him out. But crucially, we saw Darby come out with Air Fox at the start and give him, a, give him a fist bump and Nick Wayne looking a bit conflicted backstage. Yeah, and then, well, Chris, Christian goes up to Nick Wayne and uh, he just said, straight up says, Buddy Wayne, shit. And then... Yeah, he's like, oh yeah, I, 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 I have to apologise. I didn't realise your dad was a wrestler. I watched his matches and he's awful. I, I can't wait for him to like bring up to the fact that he wrestled Edge. Yeah. Oh, that feels yeah. that feels big. And then yeah, he was like, Yeah, say hi to your mom. Oh, when when Chris like it it's still living rent free on my head, Christian like telling Nick Wayne he's gonna slide into his mum's DMs the other week. <laughs> I think this might be my favourite gimmick in wrestling at the moment. Yeah. What, Christian Cage versus orphans. Christian Cage laughing at people's dads being dead. <laughs> um also that at that press conference where he just opened it up going, How's everybody's father's doing? <laughs> <laughs> uh, He's yeah. fucking brilliant. After that we got something that for me was a real treat, which was uh Chris Tatton versus Semi Sakura. It was excellent. This was oh, this, this was so really good. good. Uh Emmy hitting the um the crossbody against the ring steps on the outside was was a particular highlight for me. I really enjoyed that. Yeah. I I really hope AEW don't drop the ball with Emmy and like let her actually wrestle Wembley next year. Yeah, Please. and maybe give, maybe maybe give her the Queen entrance. Hey? How would that be? Yeah, that, I know. A video of her like crying as Saray is coming out. So we will rock you. It was too and much, wasn't it? Around. It was fucking heartbreaking. Yeah, and then like the amount of wrestlers as well that were like retweeting it, like in support of her. Like you don't want to you don't want to anger Daniel Garcia and his army of bad bitches. That's, That's true. It, yeah. That's true. But he, as I say, even if they just put like a women's battle royal on, so they can get Emmy on the card next year. Yeah. Because I think it's not so much of they having like a marquee match. I think she just wants to be able to like say yeah, she's yeah. done it. Is there any reason why yeah. you couldn't have, instead of like Jack Perry getting CM Punk fired? Could you not have just had a women's battle royal for number one contender for the TBS title, have Emmy win it, and then have this match? What you could have yeah. done was instead of that bit of TV of Miro and Powerhouse Hobbs that didn't actually end up on the pre-show. That wasn't officially on the pre-show. It, you it, could have it, just... it, did, it did on YouTube. Only on YouTube. Yeah, but like you could have just put Emmy on there instead. Well, here, here's the thing. Emmy was over there anyway because she was doing Chocolate Precious. So. Yeah. Yeah, and she did the Queen thing. Yeah, I think she did get to go and see the Freddie Mercury stuff. Uh, just to, just a, a quick, um, a little bit of update. Uh, so Freddie Mercury's piano that was uh, list priced at 2 to 3 million guy price ended up going for 4.2. Yeah. Did you see That's... them doing the We Will Rock You chant during the auction? It was great. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Very cool. Um, That's cool. So, yeah, fun match. Like, really, really good. Um, yeah. Uh, just more of that, please. They, I think Emmy mm-hmm. and Statland work really well together. They both hit really hard, and that was really good fun. Yeah. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a shame that Chris's title reigns in its uh, twilight. <laughs> Um, next up, we had Chris Jericho and Sammy Guevara at Le Sex Gods versus Aussie Open. Well, well, we did we did actually before that. Oh, sorry, yeah, we had we had, we had an update fantastic on Roderick Strong. We had an update yeah. on, on Roddy Strong's neck health. This this well, was so it, weird. Like I didn't get this at all. It didn't make sense. What didn't make sense? The the whole like he was just talking about like his parents and stuff, and how he was just like. It felt like irrelevant. It was funny. I, I, and I, it was think, amusing. I, think, I think that's the point. I don't think Roddy's got anything uh, to like actually complain about, and so he's just trying to find something. Ah, uh, okay. And I, I mean, he he he's spoken about his upbringing before, and he did genuinely have like a really <laughs> tough upbringing. Um, it just felt what, strange. That's it, all. What what felt? I think what made this feel stranger was the fact that um, Tony Schiavone was like, "Well, I think he's a liar." It's <laughs> like. Well, actually, he was from what I've heard, he was telling the truth from like pre like interviews he's done, and they did a whole thing um, when he was in NXT about it, where it was like it was almost like a mini documentary on Roderick Strong, which kind of brought this up. Um, mm-hmm. And yeah, it was it was weird in the sense that it was Roddy was trying to sort of 
garner fake sympathy by using a real thing that would garner him sympathy. Well, he's also, also just said he's better than Adam, Halo, so, you know, screw that guy. Well, that's <laughs> true. But also, Adam Cole is a terrible friend to Roddy because he didn't check on him nearly as quick when Next Samoa Joe fucked his neck. Well, yeah. That t-shirt, man. <laughs> I, I hate that Roderick Strong's making me enjoy Matt Taven, though. That, for that and that alone, he can fuck right off. <laughs> um. Yeah. Anyway, now now we had the sex gods and Aussie Open, which was quite fun. It was. Yeah. Um. I did see someone. Uh, this this sort of ruined it for me. I did see someone on Twitter described that the Judas effect that Jericho had to win this is like somebody falling out of a pub door at last orders. Yeah. He just sort of like stumbled into it, um, which was upsetting. I mean, I, I understand. I mean, it's yeah. just upsetting watching Aussie Open job to Jericho and Sammy. I, mean, I also that, hate the Judas effect as a move. Can we just stop it now? It does look like someone is just like accidentally turned around and hitting some other elbow, doesn't it? Um, yeah. Well, it's it's an actual MMA move, but the difference being with like with anything when you're working an MMA move in wrestling, it never looks good because obviously you're pulling the attack. Yeah. Unless it's like the end or black mass or whatever you want to call it, where it's like. Yeah, the guy just sending someone to the shadow realm with the kid. That's because he like that's just Malachi Black's an actually trained MMA fighter, as opposed to Chris Jericho, who's a slightly puffy rock lead singer who looks like Mickey Rourke when he hit Chris Jericho ten years ago. That's yeah. true. That's perfect analogy. Like that that now looks like Jericho going back in time and closing the loop like in Looper. Je- Jericho was almost full Randy the Ram. <laughs> Never want to go full Randy the Ram. Never go full Randy the Ram. I mean, he, he has wrestled the Ring of Honor like Randy the Ram did. So you know, if, if Chris Jericho starts using Ram Jam as as his finisher, though, I'm okay with it. Fun fact: that, that film, The Wrestler, was the first time I ever saw anything Ring of Honor related. Yeah, it's it's mad that on like a ring of, random Ring of Honor show, um, they got Mickey Rourke versus Ernest the Cat Miller. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was excellent. Um, yeah, so, yeah my, match was kind of fun. It was all right. Um, then we had a little Ricky Starks promo. Um, well, there was little, there was that like promo. it was so before beautiful. before we get into Stroke Daddy, there was that sort of like breakdown in communication with Sammy and uh, and Jericho yeah, after where they had like the shoving it. match. <laughs> Sammy walked off through the crowd. Ah, that'd be um, fine. Yeah, don't worry about it. And um, we got that that Ricky video package, which fuck me, it was good. It's so mm. good. Um, basically, just talking about his match with Danielson, which this this feels like it could be Ricky's Stone Cold moment. Obviously, there's a lot of parallels between Ricky getting made to pass out in the strap match and Austin and Brett, um, and it's just how AEW kind of capitalize on that. Hopefully, they don't fuck it up this time. Um, mm. but yeah, Ricky says there's not a man alive who can submit him, and then Danielson's the, it basically announces that Danielson's going to be and that, talking about the match on Collision. Um, yeah, but yeah, yeah, this Ricky vignette made Ricky feel like a fucking megastar. Yeah, it does. Uh, next with them, we had an MJF promo. Um, he cut an alright promo. It's like it was. It's it's fun watching him do um like sort of trying to be healy. But also do face stuff at the same time, and like sort of not quite know where he sits, and yeah, uh, yeah. Um, he said obviously he's going to have to wrestle again at Grand Slam. Um, that's and then, New York, New York, and then and then Joe came out, and oh my god, Joe! Just I love Joe's promo so much. Yeah, I think he's so, verbally about... eviscerated them, wasn't it? Well, MJF said like made that fat joke about Joe, didn't he? And he's like said something about an ice cream man. Yeah, and then Joe mm-hmm. was like, "Oh yeah, I'm like the the uh, highest drawing guy on the other te- the other team's network, because obviously, twist the metal on Peacock." Um, yes. mm-hmm. But <laughs> yeah, M- MJF threatens to uh, send Joe back to NXT, and it's cool because MJF like builds this whole promo around around that like moment. the whole regal thing, which was. It's kind of like MJF's origin story to where he is right now. Yeah. Um, well, it, it tied in, didn't it? Because this was why he was at NXT for that show and why he got to, to do that extra work and why Joe shoved him. But, and... Yeah. The the fact that he's like, yeah, you, you shoved me into a brick wall. Piece of shit. 
Joe was just like, I don't care. <laughs> yeah, he was like, I don't care that you were a kid. I, I did it because I thought you were a little bitch. Yeah. Does, does anybody care about anybody's neck health in this company? No. I mean, Tremper has got like a brand new neck. It's fine. Yeah, you just get a new one. Yeah, like if Trent. anything, it's, it's just showed yeah. you can just get new ones. Yeah. Yeah. Um. <laughs> but yeah, this this whole thing was great. Like the back and forth between these two, as you say, Tasty Samoa Joe was probably one of the best promo guys in the company. Yeah. Um. But. It was great as well because MJF slaps Joe and then he goes to leave. And Joe's like, I'm not going to fight you. I'm going to wait till I get to the final tournament. Um, <laughs> as soon as MJF's halfway through uh, the ropes, Joe just kicks the middle rope into his groin. <laughs> yeah. And then, like, holds the title up. MJF lows blows him. They brawl into the corner, but Joe hits an ST Joe, goes for the muscle buster, and then Cole finally makes the save. And then <laughs> it's just interrupted. By Roderick Strong screaming, Adam! Yeah. <laughs> Jealous ex girlfriend. Roderick oh, Strong. He's, he's fucking brilliant. <laughs> I'm really intrigued, like, what's going to happen between, like, in the in the finals of this tournament. It's like, who is MJF going to wrestle at Grand Slam? So they can go one of two ways. They I can mean, they, either. They, I mean, they literally come out, there's two men in the final, so, you know. <laughs> well, no, no, no. Look, hear me out there. <laughs> hear me out there. They can either have Roddy win it. And have MJF and Joe happen at full gear, which I think is the most sensible option. Because no disrespect to Roddy, but MJF and Joe is more of a pay per view match. Yeah. Or, and, and like another, another month of Joe just terrorizing MJF, like like a fucking yeah. Duke is is like what I want to say. And, I, want, I want Joe to be coming out of fucking closets, like Adam Cole and MJF are on like bro dates, and Joe just comes off and behind a fucking bumper car and like chokes him out or something, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Joe just dressed as like a, a waiter or something. <laughs> they go, yeah, they go, they go back to that. They go back to that Chinese restaurant, and the waiter's just Joe, and he just chokes him yeah. or something like that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> just, just, just Joe like, sir, would you like any black pepper? And then MGF's like a dick to him, so he just chokes him out. <laughs> um, yeah, I feel like they can drag, like, drag that out to full gear. I also think it makes more sense to do Adam Cole versus. Roderick, Roderick Strong, Strong full at full gear. Yeah. Full gear. Especially if like if possibly something like Kyle's coming back or something along those lines. Oh, that'd be good, wouldn't it? Yeah. Well, I, I think I, I, I don't know how the only thing is I don't know how they get to Roddy versus MJF at Grand Slam because I don't see Joe like losing clean. I mean, kingdom yeah, fuckery the, in there. The kingdom are there, aren't they? Like, so it's fine. I, I suppose this kingdom, um, Joe could just kind of like try and break bodies. And, what if CM Punk does a shoot? What if CM Punk does a shoot running and knocks Joe out? <laughs> Joe could swing him into the announce table like he did Punk. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, so yeah. Um, next up then we had speaking of Roddy Strong, we had Roddy Strong versus Trent. Really mm-hmm. fun match. Uh, Trent just Trent's just like guy. You can just be like Trent. We got a ten minute spot on Dynamite. Right? Needs fill him with a match. Just go and do it. Go and have a banger. Yeah. yeah. Pulls I, again, in his back pocket. Is Trent's neck indestructible at this point? Yeah. He, 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 you know how like to make a um to make like a sword you have to like heat the metal up to unbearable levels i think that's what trent trent's tempered his own neck by, uh, by yeah. subjecting it to like the most abuse he possibly can has trent got one of those william regal necks that's just like pure t- titanium yes absolutely mm-hmm. um, um maybe william regal's give him his like old neck got um, eyes we, it, no, next up we it. continue to have tony storm being the best thing on television yeah I love it. I love it. I want to be I a love... fly on the wall in here in Juice's house. Uh, I, oh, that that would be the most unhinged household ever. <laughs> Got Tony said, fucking. Um, he said last week on Tumblr, "What do you think their house is like?" And they were like, "She disassociates in the living room, and he's <laughs> out in the back garden barking at birds." <laughs> I, I think Ju- Juice Robinson is like mostly feral at this point. Yeah, yeah. Um, she just like lets him out. I, I the love the I, I love the actual like bemused like anger at Renee when she has to like duck the shoe and she's like, "Come on, yeah, yeah, yeah." Because what she says, chin, chin up, tits out, and watch for the shoe. Why isn't that on a shirt? 
Oh, it will be. Give it a week. Yeah. Um, Excellent. But yeah, I, I I love Tony's gimmick here. I think I as well. Uh, someone someone said like how seamless a transition it was from like her old kind of like sort of like eighties rock metal gimmick to outcast to this. Then. Yeah, like it it has been seamless. Like yeah. she lost that title, and then all of a sudden she was like just appeared on a dynamite like distraught like this. I, lo- I love so as well, good. like, the stuff with um, Soraya and Ruby where they're, like, talking about Tony and, like, he said something like, oh, yeah, she was using mayonnaise as face cream the other day or yeah. something. Yeah. <laughs> but she was, Ruby's, she like, was really so... angry about it and Soraya's like, it's fine, she's just gone insane. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. She's, just, she's just having a thing. It's just, it's just something that's happening. She was show- throwing flip-flops at seagulls in the car park at one point. She needs a, She needs I'm to brilliant. be sent to, sent to the seaside for a bit. It's fine. It's like those um, yeah. those old houses where they have like asbestos and like <clears throat> fucking arsenic in the walls. So like the wives are like hallucinating. That's what she's like at the minute. And everyone's like, yeah. it's fine. Don't worry about it. She'll be okay. She needs to be given like lithium or something. And, like, <laughs> <calm down. laughs> Got too much air rust in the water. That's she, it, yeah. She, she has ghosts in her blood. She should do cocaine about it. <laughs> she spent too long near Juice and it's just like, <laughs> just sent her a bit insane. Um, right, speaking of insanity and awesome promos, next up we had um, Hangman Page out to have a little chat. Oh, he talks about, And he, he starts out talking like a really nice promo about oh, teachers and how he used to be a teacher. That and... is fucking danger. Well, he did, he, did nice little, he, he did his nice little teacher promo first and he got like, you know, he did his like sweet Hangman thing and then Something I never knew I wanted until it happened, but Swerve came out. Oh my god, I can't wait for this. Oh, Swerve, uh, Swerve's I like can. Swerve's in my top murder boys. I love how um, Swerve like legit. It's like yeah, being in that coffin like really focused my mind. Yeah, but you know what? Like the amount of venom that Swerve was spitting, a hangman Jesus wept. Yeah, it was pure he said, hatred. Oh, that, Swerve hates everyone. That's why, but. He, he was he was he was counterbalanced by Prince Nana coming out and dancing like he's gonna dance over Hangman's corpse after swear. Prince mate. Nana's doing that new contract dance, mate. He's just been he is. He should give yeah. Nana that CM Punk bag. They've got the money there. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, so we have like some really good like cracks of Hangman basically saying like you know he works the pre-show now. He's lost his spot. He has not a new T-shirt in a year. His new contract. He, since he got his new contract, basically he's been lazy. He's been eating well. He's got his dad bod. Yeah, and then he, that, yeah, that was uncalled for. Yeah, he says you've been eating well, and it shows. Uh, mm. it, it it's interesting because he's not wrong. Like this, this, been, this, 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 is, this has been Hangman's whole like sort of story, hasn't it? Since since he began, oh. remember when Hangman won the title, Jay, and we said like the story now isn't what is Hangman as a champion. It's what happens to Hangman when he loses the belt, and like how does he come back from that? That's the next part of the story. So the only thing Hangman's done since losing the belt is beat Mox. Yeah. Other than that, he's not really done anything of note. He's not. So everything Swerve mm. said was true. Um, and then the the really good line was when he said, "If I got those those kind of opportunities, you'd be looking at the first black AW champion." I was like, "Yeah, yes, yeah, Swerve." <laughs> um, I the thing I is think... as well, um, <clears throat> looking more on him, um, Hangman's like. Thing where you're saying like he's beat Mox, even even once he got back in with the elite, it was still it was very much him and the elite. Then there was no like yeah. singles oh, he, matches. He got lost in he got lost in the shuffle. It's like it, it's like well it, it's like it reset to like pre to like pre Dark Order Hangman. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like he's yeah. fitted right back in to where it was, and maybe that'll that'll have a thing. He's also drinking again yeah. as well. He's drinking beer. Um, yeah, he's he's gonna be drinking harder stuff once Swerve starts criming him. Um, Stop it! I like this at the end. So Swerve was like, uh, Hangman was like, so it's like, I'm gonna fight you for your spot because I want your spot. And Hangman was like, oh, fine, go and ask for the match then. And then he's gonna leave. And then Swerve was like, ah, it's a shame your wife and kid have to watch you walk away from more responsibilities. Oh, that was so good. I so can't, ha- I can't Hangman, can't co- Hangman comes back in to get angry, better. and then and then well, I wasn't expecting, but it made perfect sense. Brian Cage comes out from behind and attacks him, and I, I mean, it was like, oh my god, that's really clever because Hangman and Page, have, Hangman and Cage have had these like matches before; they've had this beef before. Yeah. 
It's just, and, they, and, and also, they wrestled fucking excellent matches together. They were so This is the first that. time, though, that Brian Cage just felt like a threat to Hangman, I think. Mm. Other than when he like beat Hangman that time. Do you mean? When was that? Because the last one that I remember <laughs> was a full gear. Uh, so, sorry, was, double or nothing. The one, there was like three weeks before where like Cage squashed Hangman. Yeah. Ah, right, okay. Because he, because he, Faze just, 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 just blanked that out of memory. Faze, it's fine. Yeah. Faze, Faze 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 just trying to gaslight us here that, like, Hangman wasn't <laughs> used to Brian Cage. No, they were, they were wrestled um, once before and Hangman won. Nah, yeah. that didn't yeah. happen. Don't, don't worry about it. <laughs> um, <laughs> this ruse has yeah. been a ruse and you found yeah, it out. Uh, this Hangman and Cage matches the rubber match, the one that's happening next week. Um, I think Hangman's going to lose. <laughs> I think Hangman's going to go on a big old losing streak, starting with Swerve, like, caving his chest and with a double stump. Like, um, you can imagine him coming into the office, like, good news, Hangman, we're going to give you that Kenny Omega push. And it's, oh, good. Yeah, but it's the, it's the year one Kenny Omega push. <laughs> we'll, we'll, give you, we'll give you that Kenny Omega push, but, like, Kenny now, where he's getting pushed down the card by Takesh's knee. Um, it's, like, it's like the elite year one push, isn't it? Like, it's yeah. like... You've you've jo- you've rejoined it's, the elite, so you've got to, it's you've like, got to do that first. We're EVPs, we can't win. Yeah, you've just signed you've just signed a bumper new contract, so now you're gonna eat so many owls, it's not even funny. Um yeah. right. On to the main event then. Uh, Darby Allen versus Nick Wayne. Like what a what a lovely match for the main event. Um Seven, eighteen year old Nick Wayne. Yeah. But then yeah. so it was a really fun match, but it kind of ended a bit a bit weird, didn't it? Like everything's fine, right? Yeah, yeah, I mean, I mean Darby got real sure. aggressive. Darby like, and Nick are all right. I mean, like, Dar- Darby didn't. Uh, Darby didn't stomp Nick to death until the referee stopped it. Well, what was interesting with this was it was like they were doing the whole kind of thing where it was like, oh yeah, it's just like brothers fighting, and then Darby took it like real far, real quick. Yeah, <laughs> and I think I I do think that like it's slowly building towards. One of them turning on the other. Well, there was that bit, wasn't there, with Darby? Like Nick was on the floor and Darby went up for a coffin drop, and he was like, "No, I can't do it." And then he, he pinned him, and he, Nick kicked out of two, and Darby was like, "Oh, why? Just, just stay down. Don't make me do this." Yeah, but also as well, I feel like eventually, like since Nick Wayne's come about, like Darby's been like picking up L's, like the fucking going out of fashion. Mm-hmm. Eventually, Darby, and I think heel Darby is an interesting dynamic. I don't know if it would work, but I I'll wait think for Nat to have a completely normal one about heel Darby. I, I think I think Nick Wayne is too kind of He's a baby. He's too organically a baby face. Yeah, yeah but we need we need a young uh, heel now that Jungle Boy's gone away. Ah, uh, Jungle Boy will be back soon. It's fine. With his new music for stars the Stone Cold Glass Shatter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, please put that in his music. I, I hope they give Jungle Boy cult of personality personally for the lols. Um, that'd be fucking hilarious. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's as I say, or or it... just pay up and get um Justin Timberlake Crammy River. Oh, that'd be good. Oh, that would be so that good. Be... <laughs> um, yeah, can I have that? Please, that'd be that'd be lovely. I'd, I'd enjoy that. I'm, I'm sure CM Punk won't get his lawyers involved if that happens. <laughs> Not at you all. Know, you, you'll just send um, the elite another um, legal letter about something that happened on BTE, referencing something that happened five years ago. <laughs> what a fucking little bitch. <laughs> um, what a absolute right, wet. Should we, should, we, should we run real quick through Rampage and then get on to Collision? Because uh, Rampage is fun. Again, just really good, some really good matches. Um, Penta versus Jay Lethal was fun. I hate the fact that Rampage, like, when we're when we're like, oh yeah, we've got five hours of AEW to talk about now, and whatever else happens, and then since that's fucking happened, all they've done is put like bangers on Rampage. Yeah, I know. Isn't it? Rampage is just like no storyline, just bangers now. Like that's it. And it's yeah. like, like well, they they put like they put like nothing matches on. Like Young Bucks and Two Point was a bit of a nothing match because there was like zero build to it. It was fun, but it was just it was I there, wanted wasn't it? Danny Garcia to be ringside instead of. JK, JK, yeah. Yeah. I think we, that would have been more fun. Yeah, he's, he's, he's still dancing somewhere. Like He's still dancing himself home from uh, from the Battle Royale. He didn't get on the plane. He just <laughs> carried on walking. Yeah. He's, he, he's, he's going to be gone for about three weeks because dancing across America. He's gone looking for uh, new new trunks to uh, wrestle Shibata. Yeah. 
But no, uh, lethal, uh, Penta versus Lethal was fun. Obviously, Penta was going to win. Um, he snapped the arm, which is nice. A little, uh, little throwback. Yeah. Penta going full Lucha Underground again. Yeah, uh, Sammy and Jericho yeah. came out and had a bit of a go at each other, and they're going to have a match at Grand Slam to sort of just get it all we out. In the open. It, out. it was weird. I, I believe that's what you call it—a a good old-fashioned Donnybrook. Just get it all. Uh... Yeah. Do you know what they should do? Yeah. They could do another bunkhouse match because that—that's what that was meant to be, wasn't it? Like when you have a problem with someone, you go into the bunkhouse and you sort it out. Yeah, but it needs Butcher and the Blade, and it you need Butcher wearing like his white white jeans and white t-shirt. What bunkhouse Butch? Yeah. Get those uh, cowboy boots on as well. Next, we had a little triple threat. Uh, sorry, six six woman tag match. Um, Sheeta, Sky Blue, Britt Baker versus Taya, Anna, and the Bunny. I enjoyed this. <clears throat> yeah, we saw Lockjaw for the first time in ages. Feels like it's been a while since since Britt won the Lockjaw. I like that the tease and the cheat is going to turn on Britt. Yeah, Yakuza boss shit. Sheeta. They had they had they had, a, they had a little bit of, they had a little bit of aggro after the match, didn't they? Which is fun. Well, they they've been teasing it, haven't they? Since all in, where mm. like they've tagged together a few times and. They've both been kind of a little bit reluctant to like fist bump each other. Yeah. And this time, like obviously, because they're in that fate four way next week, he was just like, nah, fuck you. <laughs> uh, um, next, next up, and like hilariously, they showed a highlight package of Hook winning it all in without showing any footage of Jack Berry. Yeah. <laughs> which, is, which is impressive. I, I enjoyed that. Real glass, cry me a real bitch. Then we had, like you say, Jay, we had the Bucks versus 2.0, which was fine. It was fun. Like you say, nothing really, no real building at stakes. But... I was kind of annoyed they just did this. That was a throwaway match. Like, I feel like, obviously, like the Bucks are kind of drifting away from the tag title picture for a little bit now. Mm. And I feel, I feel like these guys could do some really good, like, good work together if they actually, yeah. like, built a feud. Maybe they might, so, it might, maybe it might turn into a feud. I don't know. Yeah, but for for them to just kind of, I, I feel like we're getting young bucks in the ass boys. Um, yeah, but for them to kind of just like throw this out on TV, I was like, yeah, you, you could have had a good like a good couple of week feud there. At the same time, that was just nice to this. see Super on TV. That was always fun. Yeah, you could have done this, and then like maybe even like do it as a trios with Kenny, and then have Kenny and Garcia as well, which would also be good. Because well, not Jake Hager. No, not 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 Jake. Never, never, Jake, never Jake. Jake. Hager versus Kenny just for the walls, just to watch the internet have a meltdown. Um, and by the internet, I mean fake. Just, yeah. to, um, just, just to get Kenny ready for his, <laughs> just get Kenny ready for his wrestling mass. Oh no, years, not this again! <laughs> yeah, the contract guys. Ah, uh, that's fine. Contracts can be broke. Look at CM Punk. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, next we have that really nice uh, Mike Santana video. Um, well. So- you know who didn't like this? Ortiz. 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 Him and Ortiz had real beef on Twitter, didn't they? Ortiz fucking it didn't hated feel this. Real. It didn't <clears throat> feel real. It felt like an absolute work. Oh, yeah. They probably yeah. are just working towards a match. But at the same time, it's like a bit weird that they just do it now. Uh, knowing knowing he's that been we. been posting teasers, though, like on his Twitter for forever. Yeah. I am really intrigued though by like Mike Santana's kind of new direction. Like he, he at all in, he looked really good. Um, Remember he had that changed. banger match in Gresham's promotion. Yeah, before he with got Gresham. Injured. Okay, can, I, can, um, can we just have a little pause for a sec? So someone's just uh, Kate from Fightful has just done a um, a parody tweet of that really awful Twitter article. It's uh, right now AEW is in the middle of a full blown crisis. They just had 300,000 pay per view buyers, are ruined to be valued north of $2 billion, had the largest game in wrestling history. Matt Jackson just discovered Tumblr is thirsty to go over him, and Samoa Joe is walking no. away yeah. from everyone. <laughs> love it. I, I, I love the uh, amount of copium on Twitter about that. Like, oh no, how can they be valued at $2 billion? Because. Because they've just sold out Wembley. Yeah, because they've broke a fucking all-time attendance record. That's probably how they did that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they've um, also like signed the fucking billion-dollar TV deal because of a man who's no longer in the company. Yeah, <laughs> so now they don't even have to put CM Punk on TV, and they've still got the money, which is great. Yeah, uh, no more, no more thirty-five minutes. CM Punk for everyone. Yeah. One bill, Phil. Uh, right, yeah, main event. Samoa Joe, Jeff Hardy. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. I enjoyed this. 
It's a match that happened. Uh, seeing, um, Har- seeing Hardy tap out to like a Kina clutch was like it, it. It was like part of my childhood dying. Well, <laughs> yeah, that that means Samoa Joe got ten points in the Bound for Glory series, right? He did. Yeah, he he goes to the, yeah. he goes to the top of the leaderboard. Yeah, um, that puts Jeff Hardy right down there, doesn't it? Yeah, you mean he could be out of contention? Yeah, he could be. Uh, you oh, know, he's got to he's, he's got to get a win in his next match. Could be. Don't worry. Don't worry about it. It's fine. Oh, it's, it's, it's better. That you don't, it's better. It's better that you don't know. It's it's better than you just pretend it didn't happen. Okay. Uh, right. Then on to collision. Uh, Moxley versus Axandretti. Yeah. The finish. This was Mox. fantastic. It's so funny. Um, they're like, oh, I wonder if Mox will be able to have as many title defenses. Mox is like, I'll just wrestle twice as much. He's like, I'll do them all. I'll do them all in a month. <laughs> it's like, oh Jesus Christ. Mox just, fucking... So he's done AR Fox and actually, did he just get a, a, a list of the roster? It was like that guy, now that guy, now no, that he's, guy. He's got the alphabetical list. Yeah, that's what I mean. He's got an alphabetical list. He's doing Big Bill next. Yeah, that's true. He's doing Cold he... Cabana. Let's see. Please do Cold Cabana <laughs> on Collision. Please. Oh, then get, then get, dirty, get Dirty Dan going. Imagine how. Well, he's, got, he's, got a, he's, he's, got a, he's got a crime brand and culture at some point again. Yeah. It's been, it's it's been a good couple of months since like Brandon Cutler got a good old crime and from Mox, um, yeah, this was a fun match though. Uh, Mox, the finish was great. Like Andretti is doing the stomps on Mox. Mox kind of like balances him up with his feet and then like kicks him up in the air, twists him round mid air, and then gets him in like oh, a yeah. really naked choke. Yeah, it was really good. It was remember, so remember, fun. Like... Every now and then when Mox just makes you remember, look, I'm a fucking really good wrestler. So you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He hasn't bled in any of these matches either. No. Oh, but he did. He did um, look like he'd hurt his knee in this one. It's fine. Is that real, though? And, like, well, I don't know, because he, he was limping like a lot. Mark shouldn't, Mark shouldn't be allowed to have two knees. It's unfair on everybody else. Yeah. He, <laughs> he, was, he was limping more than I thought he would have been if he was selling, if that makes sense. Right. Yeah, but he didn't. But when he hopped over the barrier, he didn't look like he was limping like after the match. True, true. Uh, right, moving on. We had another Roddy Strong video p- package, which is just excellent. Uh, they showed a load of old RH footage. Um, all the melancholic music playing in the background. Um, Roddy says he's going to win the title. He's going to win the tournament, beat Max. But he's still not going to be happy because he just wants his friend back. The kingdom looked like um, Roddy's parents and like he was in yeah. like, therapy. <laughs> yeah. Like, 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 he looked like he was at like, the school parents even or something with his mum and dad. Yeah. Yeah. It was excellent. Uh, I'm, I'm really enjoying Roddy. He's he's like he's found that next level, hasn't he? With this, I mean, we've always known he's great. He just needed something to like really, like sink his teeth, and he didn't really get that in WWE. No, um, like he he almost did with like the Diamond Man stuff, but then obviously like he wanted to leave, and he went on the shelf and all that. And they, he he had a little bit in Undisputed Era when he did the whole Dexter Loomis um, abducting him, but. That was only like for a, a couple of weeks. It wasn't. Yeah. It wasn't something he could really sink his teeth into. So it's great. It's great to see him being able to actually do some character work. Uh, next up, then we had Statlander versus Robin Renegade. Fun, fun match. They do a little twin stuff with Charlotte, um, which is fun. I like uh, the but, Renegade twins. Yeah, they're good. I, I mean, they've, they've been around a lot now. Which I mean, let's just believe they're, they're probably signed, aren't they? At this point. Yeah. Well, they um, actually few them with Athena and Billy Starks and ROH as well. Yes. Yes, they are. Um, which is yeah. definitely not leading to Athena murdering Billy Starks at some point. But no, I really, yeah, I really, do, I really do like him. Um, and then, I mean, the match was fine. Uh, obviously, starting the one. But the big news was after the match, um, the Renegades are beating up um, Statlander, and then Jade Cargo's music hits. So she makes her way back in. She batters the two twins, and then she picks up um, Statlander and then gives her a jaded. So it's like, oh, fuck, I don't know where she's at now. This is crazy. That, that bicycle kick Jade did on um, one of the Renegade sisters was fantastic. Yeah. And then Jay um, just and Smart Mark Sterling's back as well. He came out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, he, he didn't really go anywhere. He was just. But no, but he, so he's been doing like the pre shows, like the um the zero hours and stuff, like with Lexi. And like this week, he basically said, "Oh, I can't do it this week because I've got um I've got other engagements and Dalton cast it instead." Nice. So he got the, he he got he brought Dalton, in, but he actually came on and was like, "I can't do it this week. Um, I've got other business." And obviously, that's what it was. So yeah, it's uh, yeah. it's cool. Uh, next yeah, up, it's we a had... shame it's not a group workout with Tony Nice. Yeah, 
Uh, next, want. next up, we had um, Renee interviewing the Renegades. Well, Ruby and uh, Soraya. I like this. So they talk obviously. Like, we, we, we've the outcast. Sorry, the outcast. We just had the Renegades. Um, yeah, she said we had, like you say, Soraya trying to like explain away Tony being not, not absolutely crazy. Uh, one thing I did, like, well, first of all, Soraya said, and this freaked me out. It's been a, a grand slam was when she joined AW, so that's been a year already, which is terrifying. Blue, hasn't it? I I have a funny feeling that. Because obviously Soraya's like, oh yeah, I debuted last year, and now it's my return. I reckon um, Soraya retains, and then we just get a little bit of money. Mm. Oh, think? Good, I, I think Mercedes is defo oh, debut. Oh, Wrestle Dream. So, yeah. Oh yeah, that'd be good, wouldn't it? Yeah. Um, and then yeah, a nice little in joke as well. She basically says to Renee that she likes her a lot more than Lexi, which is funny because they're like really good friends in real life. They're like best yeah. friends, aren't they? Yeah, well, like you said, what you said, that they've just started a podcast together, which I've not listened to, but apparently it's quite good. I, so. Have you seen that um, on one of Dan Housen's vlogs? Um, uh, I think it was, I think it was round full gear. And they got uh, Dan Housen, Soraya, and uh, Rene go to a, um, go to like a fair to get candy floss. <laughs> and Dan, Dan Housen's just got like a load of crumpled up money and he's like, John Moxley gave me money to get candy floss for me and Renee. <laughs> I love that. It's just like a, it's just like literally like a bundle of money that he's just been handed. Oh my yeah, god, excellent. he's like pulled it out of like his hoodie or something. <laughs> um, right. Great. Next up, oh, just funny pr- Next up, proof that Tony Khan is trying to kill me. Um, yeah, you personally. <laughs> me personally, I took I took that personally. Uh, Tony Schiavone sit down interview with Claudio and Eddie Kingston. Um, so good. Again, I, I love this. So Eddie's like repeating what he said in Ring of Honor. He's like, "Yeah, 15 years ago, you wouldn't do business. You you ran away to the to the land of make believe." Uh, and then like Claudio said something, and like Eddie was like, "Oh, so you do remember?" Yeah, he's like, yeah. "Once I, what, if we do this match, then you have to say you respect me and you shake my hand because you didn't last time." And Eddie's yeah. like, "Oh, oh, like, <laughs> you do remember." <laughs> yeah, because Claudio's been like acting dumb about the whole thing, hasn't he? Like, why is Eddie yeah. the whole like... thing though? Um, yeah. where he's like, he's like, you met my parents, you know, you met my parents, and he's like, yeah, but your parents wish that who's wish the that they could have a son like me. Yeah. Oh <laughs> man! I don't know. Like, so Eddie, Eddie went insane when like Eddie mentioned. Remember I mean, when Mox and Eddie were feuding, and mm. he was like mentioning Mox was mentioning Eddie's mum. Yeah, and, and then, Eddie, Eddie was, was like, "Don't, psycho. don't, Eddie's like, don't you don't fucking you do mention that. my mother." Yeah. Uh, but then Eddie was like, "All right, fine, I'll fight you in front of my mum at Grand Slam." Oh fuck me! Like, I can't wait. You know what, right, Tasty? I know, I know. You're saying Eddie needs to get this moment. No, don't but, say it. Don't even think it. Don't even you know, think you know, it. You know, it'll be really good if no, as Eddie's won't. about to win. It won't. it won't. As Eddie's about to win, he just gets a bit of death by elbow to the back of his head and the Kings of Wrestling fucking reunite. <laughs> just imagine oh. like Eddie walking into like Grand Slam, looking at the call sheet and seeing the Chris Heroes produce one that much. Oh. <laughs> just like, oh no. He's that, that, it in <laughs> Eddie will be more paranoid than CM Punk. <laughs> oh. uh, but yeah, so the big news is it's going to be title for title. So Eddie was like, fuck it, I want this match so bad, I'll put my New Japan Strong title on the line. That he loves more than anything else in the world. Yeah. <clears throat> I, I think I think Eddie loves Claudio, imminent. Oh, it, and, then, and then at the end, Claudio was like, yeah, Eddie, I'll lose this title to a better man one day, but it won't be you. Yeah. The, the, only, the only way I'll accept Eddie losing is if Chris Hero interferes. <laughs> And oh, then, I... and then they do that. De- then they do Kings of Wrestling versus uh, Eddie and Homicide just for the lulls. If you want to watch me have an absolute breakdown, just watch me watching this match because I'm going to be just. Uh, <laughs> I'm just going to be a mess on the floor by the time this match. Regardless what's of the, the outcome. What's the date of this? Just twentieth of September. Week, I think we should do a Zoom call for it. It's not next time. It's the one after. I, I think. We, I think we should do a Zoom call for it. Yeah. Next week's done. Maybe, uh, maybe do maybe do live reactions. Yeah, oh god. I don't think I'm ready. I don't think anyone wants to see that. Like, you don't want to see me ugly crying while I watch Down Earth. Um, <laughs> right, next up then we had um Austin and Colton and Juice and Cardblade versus uh he got basically, basically well, Drago Air Drago Aerostar and Gravity, if you remember the Lucha Underground days. Yeah. 
Um, so obviously Jay White was meant to be on this. He couldn't make it for personal reasons. Um, so because, because of that, because of that, Metal he just doesn't get to wrestle, which just kind of sucks for him. Um, yeah, um, I did. I did like the fact that you said as a Collision Cowboy of the Month upside down. Uh, since if, yeah, but then he gave it to a uh, Nigel and Kevin Kelly to hold. Yeah, to look to look after to keep it safe. That fucking picture of Juice with like the shirt and tie with no sleeves on is fucking <laughs> brilliant. It's so good. Um, yeah, it was, it was really good. For... He's completely normal husband. It's fine. Yeah, um, yeah, <laughs> and um, Andrade was watching backstage, which was interesting. Yeah, um, it's what's really interesting is obviously that we know that LFI are on the return soon. Yeah. And Andrade so is, is Andrade making his own luchador crew to go up against LFI, or he's recruiting for LFI. Mm-hmm. It's interesting. I mean, we, let, we, we, still have, we, we still haven't any interaction between Rusha and Andrade in AEW, which is going to be interesting. When well, see how, other, they... than, other than when they were tagging together, yeah. Mm. But like, let's face it, Rush is always going to fucking be the fucking alpha in that yeah. like relationship. Andrew Daddy's too much of a fucking. Little pre Madonna like CM Punk to 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 be able to run a run a a murder business like LFI when you've got Roosh like a fucking Colombian drug baron on his palatial estate. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so LFI, yeah, but, he wants but, uh, Bang Bang Gang won this when Juice hit his finisher on I'm not, I'm, not, I'm, yeah. I'm gonna call him Drago because that's what he that's what I know him as. Dios del Enframundo. Yeah. Uh, he's like in his forties and Tony Giovanni called my young luchador. That was um that was Aerostar and it was Nigel McGuinness. Aerostar, sorry, yeah. It was Nigel McGuinness. Yeah. Aerostar's 30 I mean, and, he, and he called him a young luchador and it's like, oh, bro, geez, Yeah, but to, to be fair, mate, in Lucha Underground, Aerostar was like travelling through time and space. Yeah, he's, he's, it's, he's technically infinite, isn't he? So, you know. Yeah, it's, it's infinite. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Uh, next up then, uh, CJ Perry. Not named CJ Perry, just still Miro's wife. Uh, cut an it awesome promo. It's such a good promo. Yeah. Um, it, it's... It's good to see because I never thought she was a bad talker when she was in WWE, mm. but I just didn't think she was a very good one either. Um, it's good to see in like the time she's had away, she's come back and she feels like genuinely compelling when she's talking. Yeah, she, she interestingly one of the interesting behaviors she said, um, if Mira wants to go down this path, she can accept that, but she's got her own idea in mind, she's got her own path to walk down. So basically, she's is, is she going to end up oh. managing Hobbs? Is this where this is going? So here's the thing, she the way she kind of did it, she looked like they focused on like that red light behind her, mm. which was like the same sort of light as like Luchasaurus, and obviously she was talking about Miro like wanting the TNT Championship back. Now I wonder if she's gonna align herself with like Christian and Luchasaurus. Does anyone know about Miro's dad? Like, I, I think Miro's dad's alive. <laughs> no, not not if his wife has anything to do. With it. No, Lana just killing Mira's dad off casually in like a in like a backstage segment. Um, fair. Uh, next up, then, can we go promos? We had an old school like Dark Order infomercial. Like, ah, oh, they've been so good. Proper throwback to like year one AEW. Join DarkOrder.com. which was really um, nice. Yeah, I really enjoyed that. That was you great. in the really red threatening mask though. Talking yeah. about how he's a good guy is it's such fine. a juxtapose. It's, it's, it's just a name. You know, it's just a name. Of course, yeah. yeah. Really sweet horse, Muno. Uh, next up, then, we had a little acclaimed... <laughs> this is this was the most American thing ever, the acclaimed talking about being on a, a trio's world tour, and it's literally London and then loads of places in America. <laughs> yeah. Most banned thing I'll, I'll, ever. They'll probably have... Um, We'll probably have Canada at some point. Yeah, and that's a world tour then. It's fine. Uh, next up, Ray Phoenix basically battered on Helico. But, and we didn't even get to hear on Helico's music, which was sad because it's really good. But hey, there we are. Um, yeah. Nice to see on Helico though. You know, you're talking to see him, him pop up. Um, and then next up, we had, you know, we haven't had for more than five minutes an open challenge. We, we loot we your underground again. Yeah, we we need we need another open challenge. Um, so <clears> time <throat> for FTR to issue their open challenge. Uh, any young tag Thanks. team? Tasty open challenges at 2023 is tournaments. They are, yeah. It's just it's the new tournaments. Um, but I'm happy because you know who's stepping up. Um, it's West Express. It's it's not 
it's um, not Warhorse. It's the Iron Savages, baby. Yeah, I, I've realised Dirty Bull Bronson feels like like a, an alternate Warhorse. <laughs> uh, shout, oh, shout, shout out to Dirty Bull Bronson as well. He just got engaged when he got back. Um, he proposed to his partner and she said yes. Shout out to Warhorse because he's friend of the podcast. Yeah, she shout out to uh, Warhorse because he's awesome. Yeah. That BTE bit though. With the salad. <laughs> yeah, that salad tastes like ass. I'll give you that. And oh. Like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, can't wait, did, for, I can't, wait for, see... I can't wait for Iron Savage to bust on um Bald and Hair. I was gonna say, did you see can't the wait for Iron Savages with, uh... and Juice Robinson? Just like just like That can never be allowed oh, to happen for for, for safety no. reasons. No. <laughs> <laughs> it, it... <laughs> Imagine that. Um no, did, did you see the two, speaking of uh, Juice Robinson and the Iron Savages, did you see the two uh, Twitter exclusive backstage things with them? So Iron Savages, just I know you posted that promo on Discord, Tasty. Yeah. Uh, them just just cutting the promo basically about eating FTR dots. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that was great. But did you see um, <laughs> did you see the Bang Bang Gang in the Bang Bang Lounge? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> with the, no. With the, match, the matching gold visors. Um, and Car Blade had Gravity's mask on and Juice was outraged. <laughs> it was excellent. It was so good. They they yeah. are like they are the fucking work. They are the, the main. They are the, they are the saviors of Collision Army. Bang bang bang. Juice Robinson is like legit. Um, close to becoming my wrestler of the year, just based on his promos. Yeah, <laughs> like he's been having banging matches, but just like he's how into the year, he is. isn't he? He's definitely in the arguments. Yeah. Just, just, just like not even just talking though, like his entrance like we didn't really talk about the entrance of the of Bullet Club Gold where on the uh, on the kind of like the like knife like noise it lit up and it was just car blade with like the guns on either <laughs> side of yeah. And then it just did the whole like circling round with juice just being feral. Um I yeah, mean, they're, they're my, my, my like my like my like abiding memory of all of wrestling this year is just juice on all fours at London. <laughs> just like actual dog man juice Robinson. <laughs> just like howling. Does anybody have though like on their bingo card for the, on their wrestling bingo card for this year? Um if Jay White isn't there, he's just gotta be replaced by a cardboard cutout of himself, like in the entrance <laughs> I, in his entrance. I can't believe how they managed to like, get a card played over. Yeah. I uh, that's the thing, like the they're all so entertaining. Like I think it's the best thing that could have happened to the guns because yeah, I know there was a lot of like kind of mixed sort of emotions towards the guns from the fan base in general, especially um, after they won the belt off the acclaimed. That was like a a real sort of yeah. They were on the they were on the fence for a bit there, weren't they? They need they needed to be in a group like this, mm. and like it wasn't they really weird. The ELP um, energy, that's what it is. Yeah, it's big ELP. And they yeah. are, they are, the two of them are one holy LP. Yeah. Because uh, for me, I I love Jay White, right? But I know he's not palatable to everyone. And like, you but need think... someone like that's an absolute fucking. Wait, would you, would, you hypothesize, would you hypothesize that this is why he's never had sex? Um, He doesn't know what it is because it doesn't serve any narrative purpose for him. <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, I'm so confused right now. <laughs> <laughs> so right, onto the onto the next match. Let's just quit while we're ahead there. Um so it was Roderick Strong versus Darby Allen. Now I was literally saying to Sarah when we were watching this, how are they gonna like work this? So, <laughs> how, how are they how are they gonna I work this? How are they gonna work this so that Roderick Strong convincingly beats Darby Allen? And then as I said that Luchasaurus just fucking surprised motherfuckers Darby on the way to the ring and batters the fuck out of him. That was so good. Um and then the fact that he gets him in like a torture act. And Christian's like screaming at him, and Darby like reaches out for him. He's like, "Get away, get away!" Thing, <laughs> like, as, 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 as he's as he's as he's like, "Yeah, Christian's just screaming. You'll never be TNT champion." Yeah. The promo like before this match as well, where he's like, "You know, they call you a baker of breaker of backs," and he's like, "Well, my back's already broken, so ha!" Like Darby it's that energy definitely... of like Darby's accepted this fate that he's going to be a marker on Everest. Yeah, and he's just like, uh, if 100%. I kill myself here, then I won't have to go up. He's trying to get out of going up, really. Uh, so, well, speak, just... speaking of Darby and breaking backs, do you want to talk about the most upsetting bump of the week? 
<laughs> Which one? There was fucking loads of them. I know. Yeah, specifically the one where Roddy dropped I, I Darby don't... on a, where he got where Darby got dropped on the turnbuckle and then like bounced off, landed on the apron, and bounced off and landed on the floor. Yeah, that was that was great. Um, <laughs> that, that was great. There was that, the that, reverse. That, that gave that gave Tremperette a phantom pain. <laughs> <laughs> There was that reversal to the coffin drop as well, where like yeah. Roddy got his knees up perfectly, mm-hmm. and I mean, it's, all, it's almost like a, it's almost like a backbreaker guy's really good at inflicting back pain. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, that end of heartache as well was, well, I, I said to you before the match, Tasty, <laughs> the end of heartache that Roddy hits on him, Darby's going to be an actual war crime, and yeah, and it was. was. Uh, um, also in this match we got a bit of storyline development as well there was a bit of um, a yeah. miscommunication on the outside and A.L. Fox and Nick Wayne ended up taking each other out which is only going to make matters worse between them Fox absolutely took out Nick Wayne yeah like, yeah um, even. I love the way like uh, uh, as well though like they finally were working as a team and Matt Haven fucked it up for them yeah, uh, just shout out because of the I'm, I'm I'm watching and reading Wade Keller's. Um, I love Wade Keller; he's a fun guy. But shout out to Wade Keller who doesn't know that um, Roderick Strong's finisher is called the end of heartache. Uh, he just says he then finished Darby with a suplex into a backstabber for a three count. Like mate, it's the end of fucking heartache. <laughs> yeah, it's it's like, it's like um, Kevin Kelly calling. He just says when um, Jade Jade gave Chris the Jade as he went. Oh, face first, and it's like. <laughs> That's, that's Kevin Kelly it. literally just saying words. Yeah, like I mean, Kevin Kelly literally was like plucked from the fucking G one and given this job. Something tells me the poor man hasn't had the chance to fucking do his research properly. Kevin uh. Kelly. I mean, with, with respect to Kevin Kelly, he's the man who's only there because Rick Bonnie doesn't want to work Saturdays. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And no. I, I, I think Kevin Kelly's a fine commentator. I do. I, <sighs> He, he just, he's just he's negative he, energy he, he's negative energy well yeah, yeah this is the thing like with him either, he's either. he's great in new japan because it's a very kind of like straight laced way that he kind of like yeah commentates but it doesn't and he, he, he's because it's like he's the english commentator for it he doesn't have to kind of like focus too much of being like the focal point Mm. So we can have a bit of fun with like the heel wrestlers. And he tries to do that here. And sometimes it does work and sometimes it just falls flat on its face. Apparently he's and... just um, he's just handed his notice in in New Japan because he wants to move back to America. Yeah. yeah um... His wife. His wife. His yeah. Wife he was like, I can spend time with him, which is, yeah, fair, fair to, you know. I mean, to be fair, he's been, he's been commentating like for Ring of Honor prior to New Japan, then New Japan for the better part of like, Coming up to twenty years, I'd say. I mean, when I started yeah. watching Ring of Honor, it was him and was Dave Brazak. Like before that, him and Dave Brazak were the announced team in Ring of Honor when I started watching, which is which good. a very, very good announced team. Yeah, it 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 baffles me that him and Nigel don't have any co- like feel like they don't have really have any chemistry. Like, when you put Jr. Because... in there, it's all, it's fine. It it works really well when Jr.'s in there as well. But but what's mad is that like Nigel and Kevin Kelly were like the Ring of Honor announced team for a while. Yeah. And they were great. It is. I think Nigel, I don't even think it's a case of like lack of chemistry. I think it's the fact that Nigel gels so well with everybody else he's been on commentary yeah, with. Ni- Nigel was, like the, like Nigel was the commentary shows. MVP of All In. Like he was the best thing on All In commentary. Yeah. I think the thing with the thing with Nigel is that he's really good at being quite a like antagonistic commentator. But I he's good at play. Guy. He's, but he's good at playing it with like, it worked really well with uh, Sh- with Shivani on All In. It works well with JR because they bounce off each other. Yeah, it worked fantastically with him and Rick and Bonnie. Um, and him and Excalibur had really good co- um like chemistry. The thing with yeah. him and the thing with him and Kevin Kelly is Kevin Kelly's quite deadpan and straight laced, yeah. so it's mm-hmm. almost like the sense of humor doesn't really mesh well. Yeah, but well, mm-hmm. when when they're both just doing serious commentator, I think they're great together. Like in Ring of Honor, for example. But yeah, something just doesn't seem to click in collision. It might have been that we got spoiled with a month of Rick and Bonnie, and then Kevin I think, I think Rick and Bonnie's ruined it for everybody. I think that's the problem. <laughs> I mean, in the best he, way, Ian, Ian Rick and Bonnie is legitimately my favorite commentator. Like mm-hmm. he he deserves the best things. Mm. The fact that he made a new pornographer's reference and then 
the record label sent him a ton of vinyls this week and he's made up. Including <laughs> Beat the Champ and the Mountain Goats, which is fucking incredible. Yeah. And he, he was just like, he just posted the picture of him like coming back from soccer practice from like basically like coaching his, his uh, local soccer team to having like all these vinyls and being like, <laughs> just genuinely happy. It's just a wonderful man. Yeah, right. Next up then, we had um, Powerhouse Hobbs just talking about the book of Hobbs again, because fucking hell, why? Um, to attack you, specifically. It's just, it's just to hurt me. It's like Eddie Kingston didn't inflict enough psychic damage to me. We need the book of Hobbs back. Yeah. Like, Don't worry about it. All right. Um, Keith Lee basically said he wants to um, be a singles man in collision. And then I saw Bray Wyatt reference. He says everyone tells everyone to run, which I think is a little yeah. I the, like that. The internet had an absolute normal one about this. He's Which... also wearing a really cool one piece hoodie. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking weeb. And then we had another vignette for the <laughs> righteous, Jay, which probably made you very happy. This did made me very happy. Um, it was I, lo- I love how just I love how utterly unhinged Vincent appears in all of these. And then Dutchie's just like it... Dutch just starts like normal and then just starts like maniacally laughing for no reason. Yeah, like Vincent's got big Charles Manson energy. Um and Dutch Dutch is cool because he reminds me kind of like um What's his name? Robert you know De Niro's character in Cape Fear. Yeah, or I, I, I see him a bit like um John Goodman in Barton Fink, and he's like literally seen. Yeah, that's good. That's a good analogy. But basically, he comes across as like quite a normal and like grounded fella, but then the more you sort of see of him, the more like unhinged he comes across, and it's the like starts slipping. And he's yeah. really sinister. Um, like a sinister he, minister, if you will. Like yeah. Um. <laughs> Dutch, I think, might be one of the best big men that they have on the books. Um, a guy, a guy his size shouldn't be able to move that well. Yeah, I can't wait to see them make a. a I feel like they obviously they're gonna be on collision when they come up. Um, I can't wait to see them what they do on collision. Um, I mean, sh- sh- surely they're gonna have to get a trios a trios title match at some point. Uh, I'd, a... I'd be happy for a trios title match. I'd be really happy if they did um, Vincent and Dutch versus FTR. I mm-hmm. think that'd be awesome. Oh, um, yeah. what about what about Righteous versus House of Black down the road? That would be fucking awesome. Yeah. Don't yeah. you dare threaten me with a good time. A big Brody you King might, and Dutch having a, having a hoss Brody, off. Brody King and Dutch having a hoss off. <laughs> Vincent just getting like murdered by him um, by Malachi. And let him just and let, just let, just let Stu just let Buddy and Stu just let them yeah, cook for like five minutes. Buddy, just fucking cook. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it'd be so good. Please, Tony, let, let us have that. Um, that'd be fine. If, that. if, 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 if Eddie Kingston happens to lose at all hours, if he has to lose at Grand Slam, then at least give me that. Yeah. Uh, you right. anything you want. Next up, then, we had <laughs> Brian Danielson out. Um, basically, Brian Danielson got a crowd to boo his six-year-old daughter. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck Birdie. I don't mean that. <laughs> Which I was hilarious because like, the crowd started chanting, like, booing and chanting no. Um, so yeah, Danielson turned his six year old daughter it, heel, which was great. It, if I if I was Brian Danielson and my little girl said that she wanted her dad back, I'd probably do the same. Uh, to put be him, fair, put, put him in the middle of bell lock and teach you teach you what to teach you what to work. Also, like so, he said, he said this is like the last full year of his career. Yeah, but they they have kind of alluded to the fact that after that year, he will still wrestle just as more like kind of. A special attraction, yeah, which yeah. I am absolutely fine. And with. From, from from everything I've heard about his position in the company, I'm almost certain he'll be kept on in some sort of creative capacity as well. I he mean, said in the um, in the press scrum, didn't he? He was like, you know, I it's got it, it's really hard to like keep a promise to like because he talked about this promise that he made to Birdie um, on the media scrum at um, after all out. Yeah. And he was like, it's really hard to keep this promise when you really love doing what you do what you're doing. Mm. Like talking about like the creative side and stuff like that. He was like, This is so good. Imagine Daniels being like, Birdie, you know daddy loves you, but I've only loved you for like seven years, but I've loved wrestling my entire life. I did I did see something <laughs> on um, something on Twitter where like what what if Buddy is like a sadistic little fucker and then goes, Daddy, I want you to start murdering people again. <laughs> yeah, well, he is, isn't he? He, was, he said that. He was like, Yeah, uh, he said, Bird was crying when he was like covered in blood. And Buddy was like, Yeah, hit him again. 
Yeah. Like, I mean, I'm I'm not a seven year old child, but if I was and my dad was Brian Danielson, I'd probably want him to keep being Brian Danielson. I'd want to go to school and be like, "Did you see my dad beat the other man up at the weekend? That was really fun, wasn't yeah. it?" <laughs> um, but yeah, he's it, it's interesting because Tony Khan said like, if anything were to ever happen to him, like he's told his dad Brian Danielson gets the company, which is yeah. insane. <laughs> just mad at, like, like if I if I die, give Danielson the book basically, and it's like, and, <laughs> um, and Danielson was like. Well, I'd love that, but also I've got to find a way to balance that with my family life because that's more important. <laughs> yeah. It's like, okay. Um, Legend, that's thanks, Mister Calm, but I've just got to go to this soccer game and then take my kids to the farmers yeah. market. He, well, he said he, he said he wanted to like just get like to do stuff like that and like dance recitals and basically be able to be a, a dad who's there for his kids while because he had that when he finished at WWE, didn't he? And he was like, yeah. oh no, wait there, I had like. I really enjoyed being able to like have more. Well, I suppose I suppose the kind of silver lining of when he like got into that forced retirement was that he he could be there for his kids like a lot That's of least, like that was that was it wasn't yeah. it like he was like I learned to not be a wrestler mm. in that way. Yeah. Um. So yeah, he said he's got like a a year left of his career, and he's gonna make it the most epic year of his career. First thing he does is challenge Zack Sabre Jr., which, yeah, that, that's a good way to that's go. Yeah, that, quoting, that's, a, that, that's how we like, do it. The Odyssey, and I was like, oh, my God, this is the best program ever. When, when's he, when is he going? Yeah, he, he went on a bit of a Greek history kick, didn't he? Which was, uh, oh, it was yeah. so good. I felt like that was for me personally. <laughs> was you, can tell, you can tell he's been reading some Greek poetry or some shit. Yeah. Well, he, he reads three books at a time, doesn't he? He reads a factual yeah. one. He reads a fiction, a fiction one and he reads poetry. Yeah. Yeah. Which is mental. I I can't even fucking read like a book and a magazine at the same time. <laughs> like how, how anyone can read three books at the same time is mental. Um but yeah, all all I'm saying is in this last year, there's only one match I won more than that Zack Sabre Jr. one. Is it V Nigel? Uh, no. Because I think that's a given at this point. Mm. Provided, I provided think, I, Brian I, stays fit, that's definitely happening. All I think that should, uh, I think that should be Brian's last full time match. It should be him and Nigel, like Daniel reti- Garcia said re- reti- re- said retiring face. each other. That, that Daniel is. Garcia can fucking want that all he wants, mate. Um, he said that he wants to be his last match. Nah. Well, that, well, you, well what, what do you want then, Jay? Shibata. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. They'd be retiring uh, each other from fucking life. I, I want, I want, I want that anxiety. Knowing both men, men have a history of head injuries as they headbutt each other. Like any one, of, any one of these men could have to have their brain taken out of this match. We don't know. Re- re- remember the anxiety you felt when you first saw Brock Lesnar versus Brian Danielson versus Daniel Bryan. Yeah, and like Brock, like dumped him on his head, and he just like collapsed, and it was like, oh no, no, why would you do this, Brock? He's just come back. And then he yeah. like hoofed Brock and the fucking nads, and it was all a ruse. <laughs> That's what I want. Anyway, let's move on for, for this promo. So after that, after the he obviously wants Zach, um, Starks and Big Bill come out. Um, and they basically Starks has basically just had enough, hasn't he? He's like, yeah, I didn't tap out, I passed out. Um, I, I want everything now. I'm greedy. I'm greedy. I want to take. I want to take it all. I don't want to. He just said he doesn't want to be like loved. He just wants success. He just wants the he wants the, the spotlight basically. Yeah, um, Danielson. Tried to. He basically well, said he, he looks like he's about to give him a BCC shirt, didn't he? Yeah, and he said we to to get in the BCC, you've got to bleed together. Yeah, and, and then but before Starks can react, Big Bill just nails him. I, I loved I loved the way Starks reacted to this. Way he looked genuinely like in shock, as if like, what the fuck are you doing, Bill? And then he, and he, like, drag, yeah, he drags Bill off him, and he looks at looks at him, and then just like starts beating the shit out of Danielson. Mox yeah. comes out, Big Bill murders him. Well, he just, so Mox, Mox, Mox just jumps on his back. Yeah, Mox jumps on his <laughs> back, and then Bill like gets him off, and then he just screams at Mox. He tries to choke him from behind, and then starts battering him. I really, really want Mox versus Ricky Stark from this. Yeah, but I, I love, I love this for Bill as well because Big, uh, Big Bill and Mox used to be roommates back in uh, FC Dunia. Yeah. So they've they've been mates uh, for ages. So like, it's really nice for them to have this big match together. I, I like that. Um... I like that it seems as though they're giving us a Ricky and Danielson feud out of this. Yeah. 
because there's, if there's one thing that strap match left, it was, oh yeah, this isn't over, and these two can should definitely have another match down the line. Right, do you think we'll get a Danielson title reign of any type before he goes? I want an ROH yeah. title reign, I think, at this point. I think he should hold the AW Championship. I think briefly. he should. I just briefly, don't very briefly. Yeah, oh yeah, give him like the fucking Hangman run where he loses it on like his first like proper. I yeah. know Hangman had it six months, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. You can I... just give like have but a winner for have some win reason. Like, give him, like, I a always forget. I always forget Hangman and Adam Cole. Oh, that feud, dude! Adam Cole, so the, Adam Cole, Cole came out in the Halo game and everything. It was fun. I know, but you know, other stuff was going on at the same time, like MJF and Punk, which felt infinitely bigger. Yeah, it did actually. Um, so. Right, yeah. Um, next in, oh, we had a bit of um, Ray Phoenix wants Mox as well, doesn't he? Because Mox did him a bad, uh, <laughs> so he, he interrupts Big Bill's promo. Yeah, he just squared up to Big Bill, like, what the yeah. fuck are you doing, you little bastard? <laughs> Yeah, Big Bill was literally like, get down the list. I enjoyed you know, that. Like, yeah. Get down the fucking alphabet, mate. I mean, um, to be fair, Big Bill deserves a shot like that because he's been doing the Lord's work recently. He's had such a good run, hasn't he, since he came to AW? He's, he's, he's improved, does not he? Yeah, yeah he's, he's, doing, yeah. he's doing so well. Um, right, then the main event, Samojo versus Penta, uh, the Grand Slam semi-final. Uh, Grand Slam semi-final. Um, fun match. Um, I love this. That was yeah. really fun. Darby and Roddy felt bigger to me, though, I think. Yeah, I feel like Darby and Roddy had like a bit more kind of like build excitement around it. Yeah, like what one one thing which was it's weird because it's Penta and he's always like in the argument for best wrestler in the world. Yeah, is that he doesn't really feel he didn't really feel like built up for this match. No, not at all. And yeah, but it, I I did like a couple of things. So like obviously Penta and Alex set the table from the outside, and then a little bit later Joe does the walk away, and Penta puts himself through it with a dive, which was lovely. Yeah, well, one thing, and I, it might just be because we what we rewatched that uh, Unbreakable match um, earlier today, is that um, the spot where Joe does like the sick kick, and then the um, he does sick kick something else, and then the uh, sent on doesn't he? Yeah, <laughs> he did that. So fucking slow on Penta. <laughs> it was like fucking glacial the pace he did it compared to like what he does in like TNA where he's just like yeah zipping around the ring like a fucking yeah. cruiserweight. You still got that really um, good power some though, which I enjoy. That's uh oof, yeah. Oh I mean Joe can still go, he's just a yeah. little bit a little bit slower. Um a little, 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 little bit more deliberate. Yeah. He's, well, then, he's still but then the big surprise to me, um so Joe puts Penta in the Kahina clutch. At the end, and Penta taps. Yeah, it did kind of come from nowhere as well. But that's what I like. That's yeah. what I like about the Kikino clutch is that Joe can just put it on from anywhere. And like, that's that's the danger yeah. with Joe is that he can always just lock you in. And then, as yeah, soon he's as because as, because he's such a big dude, as soon as he drops down and like pulls you in, it's like getting it's like getting in, in like attacked by a snake. As soon as it's got you, you're like you're fucked. You know, yeah. there's just nowhere to go. Yeah. Um, there was a cool bit at the start as well where Penta went to do the Cerro Miedo. As he does it once, he goes to do it again, and Joe just headbutts him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it, it was um, a really, it was a really fun match. I, I mean, I, I, really very, I, I, I think that I think if, I think the Roddy Derby match felt a bit more important, like in the in terms, mm-hmm. like the because it has like main event, like main storyline ramifications. But this was just really good fun. It didn't feel as big yeah. as that, but it was. I think it was still worthy of of main event, and I think it was a it was a good time. Um. Yeah. Again, it goes it goes back to my whole thinking about why. Roddy should win this tournament and Joe should be like held off till full gear. Is that Samoa Joe feels more like a a headliner? Yeah. Yeah. Roddy. Uh, before we move on to our last little um, preview, should we do a wrestle of the week this week? Yeah. Yeah. Who <clears throat> would we do, all like? Do you guys want to go first? Yeah, I mean, um... I'm going to pick Samoa Joe because I think he's had an excellent week. It's fair. For me, it's Moxley this week. I'm going to pick Roderick Strong. Excellent. And obviously, Juice Robinson is always the fourth choice. And yeah. Juice Robinson is always the fourth choice. <laughs> <laughs> so please do have what a little vote on that. What a set of rules we've, we've, uh, we'll we've put a, given we'll, ourselves. We'll put, a, we'll put a Twitter poll up and there'll be a poll on the podcast. Um, 
sort of store as well. So yeah, uh, do vote in that if you'd like to to have a say. Uh, right before we go, um, we have to talk a little bit about GCW TNT because that's happening this week. It's yeah. the biggest the biggest weekend of wrestling that, that comes to Liverpool every year. Well, this is the second year. Um, there are five shows over three days, which is just sad fair noises. Yeah, Faye is going to all of them. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll start with Project uh, X, which is on Friday. Um, so this is like a sort of X Division kind of show, a lot of flippy boys. Um, it's, so the Project X match is literally Ultimate X from yeah. TNA. And that this year is going to feature Scotty Rourke, Starboy Charlie, Leon Slater and Robbie X, which is going to be fucking lunacy. I'm so happy that's... Robbie Robbie X is there. Yeah, Robbie, that's going Robbie, fu- Robbie X and Bat Antagonist, Scotty Rourke. Top Rice yeah. Crispy, I'm enjoying <laughs> Rice Crispy enthusiast. I'll, I'll make sure to bring Scotty Rock some Rice Crispy squares. And no back. And give them to a uh, mid-match and see what happens. Uh, as as motivation to win Project X. Um, we've I also think- got a, a match that's near and dear to my heart because it's two of my favourites. Nico Angelo versus Man Like the Reese. Title versus Korea. Korea. For the Ultimate X match, yeah. yeah. Well, but also then they booked Man Like the Reese two days later on the GCW show. Don't, don't worry about it. Um, I think on paper this might be the card I'm most excited for. You know, same. Yeah, I, I think I'm really, I, I'm really excited for the GCW show itself. Um, but we've also, I, we've I, also I, got um, Lycos GM versus Lost Vipers. We've got Scouts and Proud versus Bussy. We've I'm got a normal one. We've got uh, Rini Amashta versus Emerson Jane for the Ultra Violent Championship. We've got Gringo Loco versus Driller Dan Maloney. That's that's going to be like so much crime. That's going to be like sleeper match oh, of the weekend, I think. I, I can't wait for all that murder I'm going to get to see in that one match. We've got, for the TNT Women's Championship, Ma- uh, Alexis Falcon versus Masha Slamovic. Oh, God. I'll wait for that. And then for the, the TNT, for, the TNT, match it up. for the TNT World Championship, Please. we've got Charles Crowley versus uh, Jordan Oliver. That'll fuck. Yeah, that will, so that will be there's, not, there's, not a, there's not a bad match on that card. <laughs> like, everything's, everything looks fucking great. Yeah, gonna everyone's so going to be so upset when the twat beats her. Come on. Right, next what up What I want to we'll... see is Crowley trying to pull shit with <clears throat> Masha and Masha having fucking none of it. That's what yeah. I want. Do you, do you reckon they're going to turn that into Crowley and Alexis versus Jordan and Masha? That'd be good. Oh, yeah. Uh, right, next up then on the Saturday, we're going to start with Ignition Aftershock, um, which is not part of the three-show package. But Faye, I'm guessing you're going to this as well. Oh, yeah. So we've got UK's Most Wanted versus Synergy. Synergy is some big boys. Love to see that. We've got mm-hmm. a match that I can't wait to to, to see if I end up into this. This match I'd be, I'd be going for. Temple of Malum versus Son of Durson and Tubith. Yes. Uh, Northwest Strong. Harley Hudson versus Lana Austin. Lucy Sky versus Chantel Jordan. And then um, the tournament final for the TNT Ignition Women's Championship, which I don't know who's in that, but I'm sure it'll be awesome. And then for the TNT Ignition Championship, RPD versus JJ Webb. I can't wait nice. to see. Does that mean we're going to get Danny proper fuckery as well? Yes, like, almost, almost certainly. Yeah. Uh, so then on Saturday night we get the full GCW show. This is GCW Liverpool two. Uh, obviously after last week, after last year, um, we have um, Rini Amashta versus Session of Martina in a non-title match. We have Gringo Loco versus Arez, which has just been added. We have oh, thr- we have Thrussy, the team of Ali Catch, Dark Sheik, and Effie versus uh, Team Tate, which is James Ellis, Mulligan, and Tate Mayfers. I, I am fake. Mm-hmm. Did, did you know that Tainness was greatness? I did. I did. Thank you for yeah. reminding me that. Uh, That's a friendly it, reminder there. In a, in a non title match, we've got Jordan Oliver versus Man Like Doris. Uh, we've got Joey Janella versus Blue Kane. Blue Pain. Blue, Blue Kane isn't real. <laughs> we've got a match that I'm really looking forward to Tony Deppen versus Masha Slamovich. Oh, yeah, so love, great to see Tony back. I can't wait to, to see him again. That'd be, I, that'd be awesome. I I think we should take Tony Depp and Dead Crafty. Yes, um, uh, and Botan. Yeah, and, and both. Um, we've got a tag team death match: Big Joe, Big Fucking Joe, and Clint Margera versus Los Masses. Yes, that's, that's yeah. going to be lunacy. That's going to be absolute chaos. I can't wait for that. And then uh, GCW World Title match: Blake Christian versus the youngest in charge, Leon Slater. That's gonna fuck. That's gonna absolutely bang. That that probably will be match of the weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, then on the Sunday, it doesn't stop there. We've got Sirens Fury, Sirens on the loose. Second Sirens Fury match. Yeah. Uh, so good. Uh, so we've got um, 
Jesus Christ. We're starting off hot with Lucy Sky versus Molly Spartan. Yeah. Uh, we've got ZZ versus Ali Catch. We've got ZZ I- is so good. I can't wait for that because ZZ's brilliant. We've got Ivy versus Sapphire. We've got Martina versus Emerson Jane. We've got Harley versus Helen Charlotte Campbell. And then we've got uh, Rio, Lizzie, Alexis, and Lana Austin in a four way for the title. I thought it was a tag match. Or is it th- oh, you're sorry. Rio and Lizzie, sorry, versus Alexis and Lana. Sorry, I read that wrong. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, that's also going to be excellent. Um, yeah, that's going to be wonderful. Um, and then if Faye, if you've got any energy left, <laughs> um, we've got TNT versus. I don't think this is for full card yet. We've only got one, two, three, four, five matches hey. now so far. He's going to be getting fucking weekend at Bay, and he's the on that fucking show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so then at the last and on Sunday night to finish off the weekend, we've got TNT versus GCW, which is like the big sort of collaborated show. Everything just goes a bit silly. Um, we've got Dark Sheik versus Helen Campbell. We've got a non-title match: Blake Christian versus Darius. We've got Gringo Loco versus Nico Angelo. Motherfuck, that's going to be insane. So Gringo Loco is yeah. possibly going to be my perform. He's the ma- he's the he's the male performer I'm most excited to see this weekend because we didn't get him mm-hmm. last year and I can't wait to see him live. Um, yeah, of course we didn't get Gringo last year. We've got uh, a six man tag match: Team GCW. That's Jimmy Lloyd, Masha Slamovic, Arena Mashta versus Team TNT. That's Big Joe, Clip Mojiren. Mm-hmm. And, and and never mind. Um, yeah. And then we've got uh, Bussy versus Act Two. I mean, I can't on. wait for that one. I'm more excited for that one. Effie, you just Effie, this is just Effie's twink panic, basically, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's going to be a really fun week- weekend of wrestling. It's it's it feels like because obviously TNT and GCW have got this like sort of partnership, and it's great. It feels like Liverpool gets to be like the center of independent wrestling in the UK for like a weekend, which is just a really cool feeling. Yeah. Um, all eyes on and Liverpool. And it's all because, on Fight Plus. And it's all on Fight Plus. So if you're not in Liverpool and you can't make it down, you can watch it. And we can watch it afterwards and just watch how drunk Aaron is. Um, it's going to be hilarious. <laughs> and watch me go feral over Lizzie. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's going to be is absolutely it, Is it on Fight Plus? Yeah. Yeah. GCW made it all is. Okay. It will be. Um, yeah, so and obviously the, the, the standard rules apply. If you do see us at the show and you want to come and say hello, please do. Uh, we will have some stickers. If you like some stickers, everyone likes stickers. And uh, yeah, um, we'll be back next week to talk all about it, I guess. Because um, yeah. yeah, by the time you hear us next, we'll have, we'll have hopefully survived. Uh, it's going to be a really um, fun weekend, though, because like, like, David Vince guys are coming down. Aaron's coming down from Scotland. Troy's coming up from Midlands, Coventry, I think. Yeah. Um, Ryan's one of my, uh, from Northern Ireland. So we're all going to be together. We're all going to have a really good time. It's going to be a really nice celebration of wrestling. Please do come. If you, if you are coming, please do come and hang out and, and sort of, you know, spread the joy. Uh, and we're going to have a lovely time. And yeah, we'll be back next week to talk all about it with you. Um, so yeah, enjoy your week, everyone. Enjoy wrestling. And we'll see you later. Goodbye. Bye. Uh... Hello, yes, Dan Housen here. Dan Housen has been summoned. You must love this podcast housing, the Untitled Wrestling Podcast Housing. <laughs>